Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be continuing our Uwe Rosenberg series with Caverna. Yes, this is designed, of course, by Uwe Rosenberg. Our copy is published by Lookout Games. This is a one to seven player game, uh, which we've actually never played it at seven players. That seems quite... Or solo. Or solo, yeah. But yeah. it seems quite excessive at that uh, at that player count. Right, because it is 30 minutes per player. That's what it says it's on the box. Pretty accurate. That seems about right, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, if you are not familiar with what we mean by the Uwe Rosenberg series, Monique and I have been playing all three most of the titles that Uwe Rosenberg, the big designer, has come out with. Uh, we have a playlist here to the uh, to the playlist of all the Uwe Rosenberg games that we've done, so you feel free to check those out at your own leisure. This title was released in 2013. So same this, year as Glass Road. Yeah, same year as Glass Road. These two biggish titles at the same time. I, I'm very curious to know uh, how each one of them did. Right? It seems like this was the one that really was really popular throughout the years. Yeah, meaning like we, we were not into the hobby in 2013 mm -hmm. when this came out. So, right. uh, you know, I don't know what that, that kind of like uh, that buzz was like at that time. Yeah, because Glass Road um, is definitely a much simpler, uh, lighter game Quicker. in rule set. Yeah. And then Caverna came out, which is basically a, a, one, a big farming sandbox game, mm -hmm. essentially. And so today, as per usual, we are going to start with an overview of the rules. We're probably not going to do every single rule because, like I said, this is a sandbox game. Mm -hmm. There is quite a bit of rules over Head. But hopefully you'll have an idea as to how the game plays after the rules teach, mm -hmm. and then we're definitely going to be demonstrating a majority of these concepts during the gameplay. Yep. And we might make mistakes, so feel free to leave those in the comments down below if you catch something. That way we can add them to our Klingon subtitles. That's another thing we're going to ask you to do. Turn on your Klingon subtitles just in case we make those mistakes. We can add those corrections there. Also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future and follow along on the rest of the Uwe Rosenberg series, please consider subscribing. And with that... We are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for our two-player game of Caverna, the Cave Farmers. Cave Farmers. I believe is a full title. That's it. Welcome to our farms. Here we have the game board that has all of the worker placement spaces and then of course our own individual farming boards. But off screen, we have all of our resources. We have the weapons for our dwarves, as well as the furnishing tiles, There's the notorious, <laughs> notorious furnishing yeah, tiles. I'm only bringing in one of these. There's actually two trays like this of different style uh, building. Of furnishings, rooms, yeah. yeah. And so if you're curious, we are using two different types of inserts. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the company is of the actual box insert because this copy of the game actually came to us with it already in it. Yep. But if you are interested in the furnishing tiles trays, that is something that we got off of a seller from Etsy. Etsy it was yeah. recommended to us by a friend. And mm -hmm. so if we can find it again, we'll include the link to that in the description below. Now, if you're familiar with the game Agricola, a lot of this is going to look very familiar because mm -hmm. like I said, this game is very much so modeled after the same uh, structure of the game. Right. It just has a lot more that you can do. For starters, our home boards is split up into two different sections. We have the forest area where we're going to be planting crops and vegetables with our fields, as well as housing different types of uh, farm animals with our pastures. But now we also have our mountain, which we are going to be uh, furnishing with various dwellings that'll help us score points. We're going to be housing our dwarves uh, in our mountain and also building different uh, types of mines as you'll see. Now the way that the game works is it's played over the course of 12 rounds. Because we're playing a two-player game, our gameplay is only going to be 11 rounds. Yep. We skip round nine. So if you're ever set up for a two-player game, make sure that you put that out. Now the main board already has action spaces that are pre-printed on the boards mm -hmm. and this is going to be depending on player count. Uh, if you're playing at higher players, I believe there are different action spaces or more of them. Yep. At the start of each round, we are going to gain an additional action spot. And so off to the side here, we have a deck of cards that are arranged in different stages. They're stage one, two, three, and four. So over the course of the game, you're going to have more and more action spaces to go to. Then you're going to populate the board with resources. And so if you look at the board, any of these action spaces that have an arrow on it, those are the spaces where you're going to place the corresponding resource. So in excavation and drift mining, these will each get one stone. In wood gathering and clearing, they'll each get one wood. And these resources will continue to accumulate if nobody takes them. And a space like logging that has two different numbers, one in parentheses, if this space is completely empty, then you're going to put the number of resources that are not in the parentheses. Yep. So in this case, it's going to be three wood. But if there's at least one piece of wood in here, then during this phase, you're only going to place one additional wood, if that makes sense. Yep. So after this phase, it should look something like this. Uh, keep in mind, though, in a two-player game, the ruby mining does not come into effect until the third round. So we're not going to populate it with any rubies. Yes, yeah, so that is something that we have forgotten a lot in the past. Yeah. So 
And once this is done, you move on to the work phase, which is where players take their actions. So then starting with the first player, which is a player who has this token, on your turn, you're going to place out one dwarf on one of these uh, action spaces, and then you're just going to resolve the action. Each action spot can only hold one dwarf each. Mm -hmm. And once you're done taking your action, then it goes to the next player in clockwise turn order. And you basically continue playing like this until all players have placed all of their dwarves. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, we are dwarves. <laughs> and we're, we're, uh, we're farming and we're adventuring. We're just everything. trying to be awesome. So one of the first things that a lot of people will probably focus on at the start of the game is gaining resources, mm -hmm. right? There are lots of different ways to gain resources. You basically just place your worker out and you get all of the resources that are on that space and you place it off your board. Any goods and resources are stored just off your board and there is no limit to the amount you can hold. Yep. Some spaces are combination action spaces. For example, if I were to have gone to clearing to get my wood instead of the wood gathering, this space says and slash or I can also build a, um, a combination meadow field, which looks like that. And so any spaces that have and or are obviously you can do both or you can do one or the other. The sure. order doesn't matter. But uh, when placing these tiles, these tiles always go into your forest. So fields, meadows, pastures, which are enclosed meadows, are always in your forest. Anything with that kind of green or brown look is going to go to your left side. Anything right. with gray uh, kind of goes to your right side. In your mountain. Thematically, I'm taking this clearing action because I'm clearing a part of my forest before right. placing this uh, into my forest, right? Yep. The rules for placement are your very first one has to be adjacent to your uh, the, the entrance to your mountain. Mm -hmm. And then each uh, subsequent tile has to be adjacent to one that's already in your forest. So I couldn't just plop one down here. If I wanted to, I would have to kind of continue building out. Yeah, and Monique also had the option of turning it this way. This is also very legal. Yeah, and if I had done that, then I would get a food. Yeah. Because anything that you cover, you get immediately. Now, the significance of building out your forest is that you can use fields to grow crops. Yep. At the start of the game, the only place where you can actually plant these crops are the slash and burn mm -hmm. um, spot right here. And so this spot allows you to place one of these and then slash or sow up to two new grain and two new vegetable fields. Anytime you sow crops, they have to be taken from your own supply. So you, all, you have to already have these in your uh, personal supply. Right. So let's say I had the one vegetable in my supply, I could place it on top of this field. And if you look closely at the picture, it shows an additional vegetable getting taken from the general supply. Mm -hmm. And you can place that on top of your um, your previous vegetable yep. because you're basically growing plants, right? Yeah, grain will get you two, vegetables will get you an additional one. Yes. And so by taking this action, you can sow up to two grain and two vegetable fields. Mm -hmm. So that's four total. Now, the significance of these crops is at various times throughout the game, we're going to have a harvest that will require you to feed your dwarves. Yep. And so if you played Agricola before, that might be triggering. <laughs> it's a very similar concept. Yeah. But in Caverna, it's a lot easier to feed uh to feed your people. In fact, at the bottom of your player board over here, it shows you an anytime conversion chart that you can literally do at any time to gain a certain amount of food. Mm -hmm. So I could turn in one vegetable from my supply for two food yes. at any time. Yes, this is considered growing. This is not a mature vegetable uh, at this moment. Yes. The other significance is these will each score you points at the end of the game. You're going to get one point for each vegetable and half points rounded up for each uh, grain. Now, the other important thing about your forest is you're going to be using it to hold your animals. In this game, there are four different types of farm animals, mm -hmm. and you also have a dog, yes. which is another type of animal, but not a farm animal right. because they don't breed and stuff like that. Uh -huh. At the end of the game, you're going to get one point for each animal that you have in your farm, and you're also going to lose a point for each animal type that you don't have in right. your farm. So you want to diversify a little bit. Right. But the big thing is you have to be able to enclose them. Yeah. And so in this game, there are a lot of different rules for how uh, animal husbandry works. Uh -huh. And that's probably the most difficult part of it for me. Sure. Yeah. We'll be talking about it a lot throughout the gameplay. But in general, you have to enclose animals in pastures, typically. Each of these enclosed pastures with a, a fencing image can hold two of the same type of animal if it's a small pasture and four of the same type, of, always the same type of animal if it's a large pasture. Right. Now, there are some exceptions. There'll be moments throughout the game that allow us to build out stables. And so any stable that's on a pasture doubles the amount of, the, of an animal type that you can hold. Right. Um, each of these stables can be built on one square. And so if I had a 
double pasture, a large pasture that looked like this. Then I could put one stable on each side and now it'll hold 16, 16 yes. but always the same type of animal, um, like I was saying. And you can always rearrange your animals as long as there's a legal placement for all of them after you're done rearranging them. Speaking of stables, if you have a stable on a, a forest spot, because that is legal, that can house one wild boar. Mm -hmm. If you have a stable on just an empty meadow that's not a pasture, this can hold one type of any animal. Dogs are a major exception because they're not farm animals, so they can actually roam all over your board as you please. You'll still get points for them at the end of the game, but uh, they don't breed, but they do help you herd sheep. Yes. And so if you have any space that has a dog on it, you can put like all of your dogs on this one space uh -huh. or so, something like that. Sure. Actually, let's say I have two dogs on this space. Sure. You can house one more sheep than you have dogs on a space. So doing that would allow me to house three sheep sure. on a non-pasture, as you can see. So anyway, that is a basic overview <laughs> as to how animal husbandry works. There is a little bit more to it than that. Um, another thing is when we get to the mountain spots, you're going to start building out ore and ruby mines that look like this. Yep. And so basically any mines that you have in your mountain can hold one donkey each. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one donkey, yes. They so, work in the mines. Lots of rules. And so that's the majority of what you'll be focusing on specifically in your forest. Now, at the end of the game, for each of these spaces that you did not fill with at least a field or something, it's going to be minus one point per space. And that includes spaces in your mountains. Yeah, you want to build out your entire state. Now, speaking of your mountains, this is sort of the elephant in the room <laughs> because it's very new to this game. So your mountain is going to be doing a couple of things for you. One of the main things is it's going to be housing your dwarves. So at the start of the game, we each have one uh, built-in entry-level dwelling. It's not going to score us any points, nope. but it can hold two of our dwarves. Yep. Some spaces on the board, such as drift mining and excavation, will not only get you the stone that's in its spot, but it'll also allow you to excavate further into your mountain. Drift mining allows you to place uh, one of these, which is basically one cavern and one tunnel. Mm -hmm. And same thing with your forest. When you're placing these, it has to be adjacent to something that's already built into your mountain. And you take any rewards that you cover up, such as one food or two food. Mm -hmm. So I could do something like that. Sure. Caverns, which look like this, are specifically for furnishings. And that is a major part of the game. There are two trays full sure. of these. Let me bring in another one. So this is going to be what's very different from Agricola. Um, you should get familiar with all of the different types of furnishings, but don't worry about it too much because they are they can be quite expensive, but they do a lot of different things for you. One of the major things is there are six different types of dwellings in the game. You're mm -hmm. going to need to build these out in order for you to gain more dwarves. So if I were to build, say, the simple dwelling, this is not a great one because it doesn't great. give you any point at the end of the game, but it is cheaper than that one. Sure. It costs three wood and three stone, and now you can hold an additional dwarf for whenever that family growth uh, action space comes up. Mm -hmm. But that's not all these are good for. Some of the furnishings allow you to hold additional uh, animals. So like the breakfast room has room for up to three cows. There you go. Some of them give you uh, anytime benefits, like the cooking cave, which lets you turn in um, props for five food. Yep. And some of them will give you variable end of game points, such as the milking parlor, which gives you one point per cow at the end of the game. Um, and you immediately gain food per cow. Sure. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with these furnishings. Mm -hmm. So just try to get uh, familiar with them as best as you can and know that that's what these caverns are for. You got to go to an action spot that says furnish a cavern and then that'll allow you to build out one of these in one of these spaces. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, on the opposite side of these tiles are double cavern spaces and you can build these out using specifically this uh, excavation spot. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why you might build this instead of the double cavern is because this has a tunnel yes. and tunnels are going to be very useful for constructing ore mines. Ore mine construction is a stage one action uh, card, as you can see, it which means... To be the one we flipped, yeah. yeah, it happens to be the first one that we flipped, but it can actually appear any time within the first three rounds. And so when you build an ore mine, you'll be building one of these. And so ore mines will score you three points at the end of the game, but they'll also help you gain ore when taking spots like that. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about ore mines is they need to be constructed on top of two adjacent tunnels like this. So if I had something that looked like that, I could build one of these on top of the double tunnel system using uh, that action space. Somewhere in the middle of the game, this action card will come out, which is the ability to build out a ruby mine. And so ruby mines look like this. They score you four points and they gain you rubies, which are really, really useful in this game. The thing about ruby mines is they also must be built on top of a tunnel. So you could build it on top of a regular tunnel. But if you were to build it on top of a deep tunnel, which is a tunnel that comes with, a, with an ore mine, mm -hmm. it's also uh, darker in color, yep. then you gain um, a ruby immediately into your supply. 
Rubies are useful because at the end of the game, you're going to score one point for each of these that you have in your possession. In addition, at any time, you can spend your rubies for any of these things that you have on the card. Yeah. So it's going to be stuff like any of the types of animals, or um, if you really just need a one space field mm -hmm. or a one space meadow, yep. you could even turn in two rubies for a one space cavern. Yep. So if you really, really need to uh, furnish your dwelling and you don't have one of these, you can spend two of these before taking that action it's, to place that down. It's a good bailout. It really is. Yeah. And there's an additional usage for them when we get to the weapons forging part of it. But just know that rubies are great. Yep. And so that's the majority of what you're going to be doing in both your forest as well as your mountain. The last thing, the sort of new thing that Caverna introduces uh, that wasn't in Agricola is the ability to go on expeditions mm -hmm. and forge weapons for your dwarves. So sometime within the first three rounds of the game, you're going to find this card, which is blacksmithing and arguably one of the most used actions in the game. Or the most used action. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so this action allows you to forge a weapon for your dwarf. And so this space allows you to turn in ore. So that is one of the major uses for ore. You can turn in up to eight ore to forge a weapon of whatever level. So if you uh, turn in four ore, you're going to start with a level four weapon. Right. So let's say I turned in five ore and I took that action spot. I place uh, a level five weapon on top of my dwarf. Yep. From now on, including during this action, anytime I see an action space that has this symbol, I get to go adventuring with my dwarf that has a weapon. Right. I think it's called going on an expedition, expedition actually. Yes. Uh -huh. And so the number that's inside that shield tells you um, what level your expedition is, which basically just means how many unique items you're allowed to take by going uh, on this expedition. Yep. So if I'm going adventuring at a level three with a uh, level five weapon, I can take any three unique items that are up to this level here, not counting the level six. So right. any three of those, as long as they're all unique. So as you can see, this is a very uh, customized way for you to gain the goods that you're requiring at that time. Right. And at the end of every expedition, you're going to level up your weapon to the next level. So with in our case, it's going to be up to level six. Yep. The highest the weapon can go to is level 14. And once you get to the kind of the backside of this card, this is where the um, the bonuses are really sweet. Yeah. Because you can go uh, adventuring and get a field mm -hmm. or a double pasture right. or something, which are really, really strong. There's specific actions on the board, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And that's how all of these uh, action spaces work, including this one, except the difference is you can only take two items. Yep, and this one, which gets you one item. Yes. You're always required to send out dwarves without a weapon before the ones that do have a weapon. And if you have several that have weapons, mm -hmm. then you have to uh, send them out in increasing value. So always the lowest valued weapon first. This kind of stops you from just uh, sending out your really strong um, weapon to dwarf a yeah, to take a spot like this, yeah. right? There is an exception. And that is when it comes to rubies, rubies. our favorite resource. Yes. So you can always spend one ruby to put out a dwarf out of order. Break so the if rule. You really, really, really wanted to spam that with your level 10 <laughs> weapon dwarf, uh -huh. you can. Yep. And I think that's it. That is a strong majority a good amount of, the game, of yeah. what you're going to be doing in this game. If there's anything that we missed, we'll talk about every action spot as they come up throughout the game. But the last little bit is after everyone's taken their actions, you bring your dwarves back home. And at the end of certain rounds, you're going to have a harvest. And the rounds where you'll have a harvest are denoted by this uh, green leaf yep. at the bottom of it. Harvest phases follow the same three steps. You first have the field phase where you actually get to take the top of all of your crops mm -hmm. on your forest board. Then you have the feeding phase where you have to feed your dwarves. So for every dwarf that you have, it's going to be two food. If you just gained an infant <laughs> by uh, taking the uh, the uh, family growth action that round, then that infant only costs one food. Sure, it's there's... not on the board right now, but yes. eventually it'll show up. Because they're still tiny. Yep. And then finally, you end with the breeding phase. And this is standard Uwe Rosenberg breeding rules. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically as long as you have at least two of a certain breed of animal anywhere on your board, you gain one more. Yes. So it doesn't matter if you have six. You just gain one more right. of that specific type of animal and you must be able to hold them on your board or else you don't gain them at all. And you cannot convert them in that moment to food. Just, just so you know. Yeah, just note that also in this game, you are free to move around and reconfigure your animals at yes. any time. So if you need to make space uh, that makes it legal to breed that animal, yep. then you're f free to do that. And you can be creative yeah. with your mountain board, right? Mm -hmm. That is pretty much the bulk of it. Yep. Um, we're just going to go ahead and get cleaned up and then we'll get started with our playthrough. Okay, so we have reset the board. We have reshuffled all the action cards that are going to be coming out. We just need to figure out who's going to go first. I already know what my uh, rock, paper, scissors choice oh, is going to okay, be. So. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, one, <laughs> two, three. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm first. Is that good? <laughs> yes. It's okay. nice to go first in games like this. All right. Since you are going first, 
You get one food. I do. So there's your food. It's my one. And I gain two food, so that's yeah. one less that I need to worry about sure. uh, when feeding. Sure. Otherwise, we've left all of the goods and resources already sort of pre-populated. Yeah, no but need we, to take them down, just to put them back. And we reshuffled all the action space cards, so now we don't know what's going to be coming out mm -hmm. uh, in the first round or so. And I think we're ready to begin. Are you ready? Um, yeah, I'm there. All right, round one. First phase, again, we are going to put out... Our first action spot okay. card. What's it going to be? We have sheep farming. What? Oh, you can get your first sheep now. That's like the least ideal of the three options. Yeah, that's <laughs> sweet. Okay. Okay. That's the kind of game that we're going to have. Okay. Okay. So now you would populate the board. We populated um, most of it except for this one. Right. So that spot is going to get a sheep. So now we are going to have the most sheep bang for our buck because it's <laughs> coming out in right. the first round. That's right. Again, we do not populate ruby mining because it's a two player game. And this only starts uh, in round three. Mm. Well, I've always been a big fan of the supplies action here. <laughs> it just gives you a little bit of everything. So okay. uh, wood, stone, or food, and two coins, which is technically two points. Wow. And two points. Yeah. Wow. So this is, go ahead and make sure I gave you everything. Uh, this is what the gold points look like. And these are just straight up points at yep. the end of the game. But you can also use them to buy food, right. which is going to be uh, one less food than the amount that you're paying. Sure. But who wants to pay points, right, for food? Exactly. <laughs> All right, your turn. Now, we have a couple of options here. I know that in order for us to start building dwellings, you're going to need a minimum of three wood. Mm -hmm. You also need the wood for sheep farming. So these wood spots are not bad. But at some point in the next two rounds, that forging a weapon spot is going to come out. <laughs> Money's so favorite spot. You also need ore. So then I'm going to do neither. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm okay. going to go here. Because um, I'm usually, I have no idea what to do at the start sure. of the game. So I might as well go farming. It okay. gets me one food. I get a grain. Grain from the supply. So now you have seeds, basically. Yeah, it goes to my personal supply. And slash or I can um, uh, clear out an area here. And I'm definitely going to do it. I'd imagine. It's yeah. a meadow field space. So I'm going to go like this. To cover up that food? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go like this. Why not? So I cover up that one food. Mm -hmm. So now I have all the food I need for the first harvest. Because oh, it's going to be two food for, and rolling, huh? for a dwarf. Yeah. And you're going to need to build out these meadows if you want to make pastures for yeah. a spot like the that anyway. So it's kind of useless. Sure. All right, back to you. Well, all that wood talk has got me feeling like I want some wood. Ah, uh, okay. I should have known. What was I thinking? Yeah. That's fine. It's still going to replenish with three more it, wood it is, yeah. in the next round. So it's not like really lost anything. Sure. All right. So I might as well go here. Yep. So this is going to get me the, uh, one food. Plus the start player marker. That is the only way that start player rotates by right. going to that action spot. And two ore. So it felt better than just going to ore mining, right? Yep. I debated doing it, but I was like, ah. I'm ready. I'll take the wood. I'm ready to forge a weapon. I know. Monique <laughs> loves that, that strategy. That's, I love that's it. That's her route. But I don't utilize it well. <laughs> so weapons are only useful if you can actually go on expeditions and get the things that you need. Yeah. Um, I just go and I'm like, ooh, look at all the things I can get. <laughs> it just looks cool. Like your turns just look cooler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, so that's everything. So go ahead and take back your dwarves. Real um, simple, real easy. Phase five is supposed to be a harvest, but we are not going to have a harvest at right. the end of this round. So now we go straight to round two. Round two. All right, so let's go First ahead and reveal phase. the next uh Oh, there it is, Monique. Space. Yay. What you're looking for. Hooray. Okay, so at, by the way, at the end of the second round, we're not going to harvest either. The first harvest starts at the end of the third there round. There it does, yeah. So now we can start forging weapons. Let's go ahead and uh, replenish the board with some resources. All right, now we're all set up for the worker phase. We yes. have repopulated the board with the necessary resources. Including the sheep, sheep. by the way. So as you can see, we're going to gain more and more sheep um, throughout the game. All right, so then straight into our actions, starting with me this time. I'm going to go here sure. and take three ore because I'm greedy. I know where you're going next, <laughs> and I can't do anything about it. Yeah, don't do it. Okay, uh, I kind of like... I'm going to start building out my cave. Kind here. of. Yeah, I'm going to go it. to the drift mining. I'm going to take these two. <laughs> okay. And then afterwards, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those. It is or You don't have to take I'm it. I'm definitely doing Just it. Just so you know. So I'm going to put this out like this. You're going to get the food? Yeah, I'm going to get the food that's underneath it. There and you that's go. going to cover up. And so now we're, we're, we're working. We have materials to now build stuff. You have a lot of resources. Yes, living. that's the goal. See, that's the problem with being so... Um, Tunnel vision for making these uh, weapons mm -hmm. because that's literally all I have going for me. And <laughs> you have options. Honestly, I think I'm having regrets. <laughs> Already? I think so. I'm not okay. gonna go here. Okay. Because you Surprising. have until here to try to furnish a dwelling yeah. so that you can start 
making more taking family more members actions, yeah. and you need more workers. So I am not going to go blacksmithing. I'm going to go logging. Logging. I'm going to take three okay. wood because uh, dwellings require both wood and stone. Yes. So, all yeah, right. Ugh. You've made your peace with it. Uh, no, <laughs> but that's Agricola and Caverna for you, right? Yeah. Every move is a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> Feels think, like a mistake. I'm thinking this supplies thing again. I don't oh know. Oh my gosh. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It's two points. It's two points plus all those thingies. I'm going to do it. I, okay. I, yeah. One, one of everything plus two points. Seems like a strange choice. Does it? No, I'm just kidding. It is a fine choice. Yeah, look at that. Especially this. considering what you already now have. Now I can feed my people. It's really good, actually. And then getting all these materials... All right. Well, there you go. That is it for the second round. So you retain first player. I do. Let's yeah. go ahead and take our uh, dwarves back. Dwarves Oops. back. Just like that. There is no harvest yep. at the end of this round. So now we're going to move on to round three. Snappy. Are you ready? Yes, there will be a harvest after this, but yes. it looks like we both have enough food. And for uh, veteran players of this game, you already know what action is coming up. Yeah, I don't remember. I, so, yeah, we're not better. <laughs> so we don't ah, know. Or mine or construction. Mine construction, you what say. What do you know? Well, let's go ahead and repopulate the board. Sure. All right, we are fully repopulated, and you may notice that since we are in round three, we now have our first ruby. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. It is. This spot is nice, by the way, if you have a ruby um, mine, because it gives you an additional ruby gem if you have at least one. Right. Doesn't matter how many, right, you just right. have to have one. All right, starting with me. We are already in the third round. This is madness. Yeah, it's quick. Well, now that I have some wood, I need some stone. Sure. Because all dwellings, I think, need stone. So I'm going to go over here where there's uh, the most stone okay. on the board. I'm excavating. And so this spot, um, in addition, uh, lets me take either this side or the double Opposite cavern side. side. Yeah. I think I will do the tunnel side. I think you, you had something going there. Yeah. Um, it allows you to potentially build out these ore mines in the future. So. Yeah. I like what you did with this. Yeah, might as well take some food. Yeah. I'll take a one food Why not? supply. It is kind of nice having caverns next to each other because some of the dwellings, I think... I think maybe like one or two of the dwellings do something like where, with adjacency. I, I think so. It could be wrong. I can't remember. Yeah. But uh, that is a reason for why I'm putting that there. Yes. So, all right. Back to you, Naveen. Ooh, okay. I know what's coming in the next round. Yes. And I would like to be first in the next round. <gasps> so I'm going to take this. You. I get food. You're and nasty. I get, I get two ore as well. <laughs> Here. You got two ore? Oh, yes. You you deserve it, Naveen. So you the next round it. is where you can start making a, a baby or another worker. So right. that's why I'm going to want that, that happening soon. Touche. Mm -hmm. Well, that means I'm definitely not going to get a baby until round five, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But at least I'll only have to pay one food for them. Yep, that's true. I guess. I'll be on the hook for a little bit more. It still doesn't feel great. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back yeah. to me. I'm going to finally go... And go blacksmithing. All right. What do you, what do you got? Five? You I have five. In? I have five ore. One, two, three, okay. four, five. So this is going to... So it's going to become a five, and then eventually it'll level up to a six. Yeah. So I'm just going to put it on there just for demonstration purposes. Sure. I have a level five weapon. So mm -hmm. I do that, and then I can go adventuring uh, up to level five, three different items. We didn't talk about this in the teach, but as soon as you have a dwarf that has a weapon on it, that dwarf can never reforge a weapon. This space is only for uh, dwarves who don't have a weapon. Right. You can still take this action. You just only be doing the ore portion of it, yeah, the bottom correct. part. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our expedition loot. Okay. So I can get up to this. Oh, the wild boar. boar. I can't hold it. No. Well, yeah, you can. You can Remember, uh, you can put oh, yes. a pair of animals in there. That is right. See, I always forget that. So then I think I'm going to take a wood, a stone, and a pumpkin or okay. vegetable. Yep. Just because I'm at three and three. Sure. And uh, I think the, the good dwellings are like four and four. Yeah, the better dwelling that's kind of more abundant is right here. It's four wood and three stone. And instead of that fourth stone, I think I'm going to do a wild boar. Mm -hmm. Because the wild boar you can turn in for two food. In a pinch. Yeah. In a pinch, yeah. So And there are other places to get more wild boar. Sure. So I'll do that. So I got my one wood. Let's do one vegetable okay. and a wild boar, which nice. I'm going to hold in my entry-level right. dwelling over You're here. To. Now that I'm back from my expedition, my weapon will level up to a six. six. So in the so, future, it gets better. Yeah. And so this is the one that has to go out, unless you spend a ruby, which you don't have right now. Yeah. In the next round, this has to be the second one you play. Correct. Because the other dwarf does not, where is the other dwarf? Does not have a... Uh, <laughs> I had a friend. Uh, an animal. No, no weapon. No weapon. Animal. <laughs> an animal on his back. Are you confused ah, yet? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 
Yes, that's correct. You yes. have to send out the ones who don't have a weapon That's first. right, yeah. All right, back All right. to you, Naveen. So knowing that you have everything you need to furnish a cavern, and if I don't take this now, you will take it first on the next round, I'm going to go here. Okay. So I get a dog, and then I get you to do. furnish a cavern. You get a Dexter. I do, yeah. There you go. A little brown Dexter. <laughs> so there you go. So dog. I'm going to put it, um, just stay in the dwelling. You yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't matter. matter. The dog can wander can everywhere. Wander. All right, and then now we get to furnish a cavern. So I like uh, this dwelling here because it gets me three points. The standard dwelling? The standard, yeah, dwelling. Uh, it has room for one dwarf, which I know I'm going to get uh, as my first action there. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm going to need to house them. Uh, and it's going to cost me four wood. Yep. And three stone. Right. It's a little more expensive than I want to pay, but it's worth three points. For yeah, extra, it is. You know. That is true. So I'll take it. And I'm just going to place it right over here. Yes, it has to go in a cavern. Yeah, so I can either place it here or here. I'm just going to, for neatness, I'm just going to do it right there. All right. All right. So there are several different types of unique dwellings that are um, on our little trays over there. Yeah. But uh, if you want just a standard dwelling, these are not limited. There are several of these that yep. come with the game. Mm -hmm. So it's friendly. All right, let's go ahead and take back our, our workers. Because okay. that is the end yeah. of the action phase. It is. it is round three. This is round three, yeah. Oh, we are going to have a we harvest. We are going to have a harvest. Our first yeah. harvest, I should have planted my crops. <laughs> well, that's a whole action. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's not much you can do with only two workers. So the first kind of third of the game goes by really quickly. It does, yeah. All right, so let's have our harvest. Again, harvest time goes in these three steps. The first step is a field phase. Neither of us have any crops no that are crops. growing, so we're going to skip that. Yep. Now we go into our feeding phase. So for each dwarf, you pay two food per dwarf. Yeah. So it should be a total of four. Two, three, four. Here's my four. So we each have uh, enough just standard food to do this. Yep. But again, you can convert um, things. Animals, not dogs. Uh, and then you go into the breeding phase. So no, none, neither of us have at least two of the same type nope. of animal, right? Yep. So that's it. Real Very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Probably the most simple of the harvest phases that we'll have uh, all game. Yep. And just like that, we're moving on to round four. Are you ready I to am... make your baby? I am, yes. <laughs> okay. So the, the card that's good, that we know is coming out in yes. round four is Wish for Children. Yes, you're wishing for them. There you go. You're wishing, oh dearly, for, so... for children. All right, let's go ahead and repopulate our resources. Sure. All right, we are fully repopulated with our goods. Again, we are in round four. So yes. now is Naveen's momentous occasion. It's my moment. You can wish for children. It's, I'm wishing hard. Yes, but before we get to the work phase, as a reminder, at the end of this round, we're not going to have a harvest, but we will have to pay one food per dwarf, Committed. including Naveen's infant. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're assuming I'm making an infant, but of course I'm going to make this infant. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I've set myself up for this dwelling to house infant. Yes. So I'm going to do the top side here. I'm wishing for children. I'm not going to be furnishing a dwelling. Right. So I put that there. I take one of my three discs that are off the side here, yep. and I place it right on top. So this means that in the next round, I'm going to have three workers to yes. go take actions, which right. is fantastic. Your infant will be fully grown fantastic. for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real quick. And by the way, uh, we did not mention this during the teach, but at the end of the game, each dwarf that you have is worth one point. That's right. yeah. So yeah, that yeah. is very, that's different from Agricola, right? Yes, you get, I think, I think so. it's three points each or something, something like in that. Agricola. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if they have a weapon or not, it's just right. for having them, it's one point mm -hmm. each. Well, I have a feeling that you're not going to be furnishing any caverns anytime soon, right? Mm, yeah. So it's I must place happening. this dwarf out first. I'm going to go to drift mining. Okay. So I get two stone. Interesting. And I also get to put out one of these, right, which right, is right. nice because I can start my, my double tunnel system right there. All right, well, knowing that we have to feed and I have to feed three and I only have two food, this mm -hmm. spot is looking pretty nice right now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start getting into this uh, forest area over here, plus okay. getting some food. So I'm going to take sustenance. Okay. So I get the three food. Yeah. I also get one grain from the supply. And then I also will take one of these. This is going to be nice for me. That is nice. I'm just going to go ahead and place it just similar to what you did. So I'm going to put that right down on this and get an extra food. Very so good. I get a food and a grain from the supply. There you go. Awesome. Oh, and uh, uh, the grain, please. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I need that. So back so to I'm me. out of actions, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm now unsure. Do I have to furnish the cavern now? That's a question. I think I do. I have to go here. Yeah. I won't have enough actions uh, in the next round. So I'm going right. to go here. It's going to get me a dog. Okay. I have my own dog now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming you're going to do a dwelling, right? Like the I one am. that I did. Well, let's see. I now have three, four, five stone and four wood. Uh, wait, what is that? Yeah, four wood. Four and yeah, four and five. And I think I'm just going to build a standard dwelling, just gets like what Naveen did. Yeah, three it gets points you points nice. and it does the job. So here's three stone, one, two, three, three four. four wood. Very good. There you go. Yeah, I'm nice. going to go ahead and add it right there. Yeah. 
So now I have room for um for the next round. My baby. Yeah. There. All right, that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, bring back our workers. One, two, three. So we have one, two, three. And then let's pay our food. So not a harvest round, but we do pay one food per dwarf. And that I have two. That includes my uh, infant. That includes you. Yeah. yeah so, so here's you have to pay my three. three. I have to pay two. One, two, three. So one, two. There you go. And just like that, we are headed into round five. It's moving, yeah. So yeah, this yeah. game is really moving. It's How going. are you feeling so far? Uh, it's nice <laughs> to have an extra worker, for sure. Oh um, my gosh, you have that in my face. <laughs> no, I mean, you're going you're gonna to do it right now. I know you're going to do it. So yes, you'll yes, just be yes, one yes. round behind. And that's just the way it goes. So, All right, yeah. shall we? Yes. Round five. Here round we go. Five. Let's get our next action okay. spot. What, what is, is it, it? going to be? I wish I... Ooh. Ooh, okay. Ruby mine construction. Nice. That's so now great. we can finally construct a ruby mine on either a regular tunnel, which you can actually do now, or uh -huh. a deep tunnel, which comes with the ore mine. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and repopulate. All right, we are fully repopulated, yeah. ready to go. Now it's starting with you again. Yeah. <laughs> now you have three workers. Ooh, there's Not some good. good stuff out there. Like what? Tell Rubies, me. <laughs> sheep that all can be converted into food, a bunch of wood. Yeah, we are living in a land of abundance at the moment. So as you can see, this yeah. is a stark difference from Agricola. <laughs> right. Uh, I do see that four ore here would be very nice. For yeah, me. that oh, is nice. I have to take that down. So you can start forging a weapon. I could. Right? I could. All right, well, I must go here um, because I now have a dwelling. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and make here comes the baby. Make my baby. And again, if it wasn't obvious, you have to have an available dwelling before going to that spot. Right. So. All right, well, I have the max ore to go to the blacksmith with eight. So I think I'm going to go there because I'd love to adventure. So wow. I'm going to go here. Uh, we're going to spend all eight. So that's going to make it uh, a level eight there you go. Perfect. And All right. Now I get to go on Your three expedition. expedition loots. So uh, let's go ahead and get myself. Knowing that I have to feed for six, uh, I'm oh. definitely going to want the vegetable, mm -hmm. the boar, which I'm going to eventually end up turning into food. Okay. So vegetable could go off to the side. Boar has to be housed. So the this room can house yep. this here. And okay. I believe the dog can stay in there with it. The dog that is wandering. The dog can wander, yeah. Yeah. There. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Scouting the forest. Yeah. And I think I will take um, a stone. A stone? Let's go ahead and take a stone. Okay. There you There's go. a lot of wood out there. So for one action, you know, yeah. it's not yeah. like we're going to go wood, 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 you know. Can't turn that in for food, just it. so yeah. you know. <laughs> no, not right now. All right. Well, it's back to me. I only have one uh, person left here. Mm -hmm. And now I was hit with the reality of us having to go into a harvest. So... <laughs> about that actually before i take my turn your uh, weapon goes up to a nine, nine. yes thank you yeah. that's the part that i always forget Very you get important. a nine that's nice for you nice. so all right thanks so uh, i think there are a few ways in which i can go about this mm -hmm. but i desperately i do need food you need in order five to food feed. in the end yeah yeah uh so i figured you can go somewhere like here and just turn all five of these sheep into food but you w i wouldn't be able to do this stuff up here you have no wood, I don't have any wood. Or you have stone but i also don't have enough meadow spaces to get like a long pasture yeah so i think i'm just gonna have to go here to my oh, ore mine construction perfect, yeah that's the whole reason why i wanted to do a double tunnel anyway because mm -hmm. i wanted to build an ore mine okay so so you're building an ore mine yes so that's this, this thing is going to go on top. Now you can house donkeys. Double tunnel, I can. Yeah, you can find yourself a donkey. <laughs> I can house my donkey. I can also put a ruby mine here, and that'll get me a ruby immediately, which, which is, is nice. This whole thing there, yeah. But yeah, yeah. in just doing this, the ore mine itself is worth three points. So we're gaining points. That's good. Yeah. Plus, I get three ore. So if in the future I would like to forge another sweet, sweet weapon, mm -hmm. I'm three ore towards that. Sure, yeah. Uh, then I can go adventuring. I can do two, two different things. items up to a level of six. This is food and, gathering. Yeah, in my mind, I'm just getting I'm just getting food. So the highest ticketed items to convert for food are going to be the wild boar and the vegetable. Sure. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the wild boar and the vegetable. Um, I think I'm just going to convert them into food. No. Now, yeah. Okay. So it's two and two. So it's going to be four food in total. I think you can do this. You can do this right before feeding, technically. Yeah. But so I don't know why I'm doing this now. It's good. <laughs> but here we are. You have no more workers, so it's like technically the decision you can make now. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, but my weapon also goes up. Seven. Yeah, goes up to a seven. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous of your nine, mm. but that is what happens you're, when you forge a weapon with not 
working. that much ore. And I believe that's it. That's it. So you. now it goes to you. Okay, for your final my worker. third worker. Now yeah. I need food. Um, I don't want to have to use these, but I might have to. How much food do you need? You need six. I need six. So I have one. You know, one, two, three. This is technically four, five, six. Okay. I also have the boar here, which would be seven, eight. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what's underneath this right here. So I need right. to be careful and not, you know, overspend. So then the sheep are looking real good for you. Sheep are <laughs> looking good, but so is this spot right here. This is not looking good. The thing about the sheep is you can house two of them. You don't have to convert all of them into food. Yeah, because I can um I can put my dog with yeah, it. Yeah, right? you can put your dog with it. it. Yeah. So I've actually noticed I should probably grow some crops because slash and burn is available. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. I'm going to take this one, not the one with points on the side, but this side. <laughs> That's uh, the one that gains me any points. Yeah. But. So I'm going to put this like this so that hopefully I can kind of create a pasture maybe in the future. Yeah, smart. Uh, so let's do that. And okay. then uh, I'm allowed to uh, grow my crops or plant my seeds. So I'm going to put the grain on top, which is going to get two extra from the supply, yeah. and the vegetables right here, which is going to get one extra from the supply. There you go. So it's like... Stacking. Like I'm stacking it's there. Stacking yeah. Game. That's good. Yeah, perfect. All right, that is it for the work phase. Let's yes. go ahead and take back our workers. Okay. I need, I'm need. i just going to keep these stacked yes. so that I remember that that's an infant. Right. Because I only have to pay one food for them. But uh, speaking of paying, let's go ahead and go into our harvest phase harvest yeah so this is a full-fledged harvest time round <laughs> so we're going to go in order harvest starting with the field round. phase you are eligible so to do I get this to pluck one off and one off and they're going to keep coming congratulations I love it. yeah you're farming maybe. i'm farming yeah <laughs> now we go into the feeding phase so mm -hmm. two food per dwarf one food per infant so it's a total of five for me okay. i have four here which means i'm going to turn in i'm going to convert this grain for uh for one food to make it, okay so it's a total of five five Okay, so for me, I have one, two, three. I'm going to turn my pumpkin into four, five, and then the grain in for six. Okay. Okay. Very good. There we go. So, I have food, please. Uh, yes, I don't want to give these up, but there you go. And my infant has now grown into an adult. Then we have our breeding phase, but again, neither of us, we are slacking <laughs> in the animal game. Nobody think, wants it happens to... more in the second half of the game, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Animals are a lot of work. They're a lot of work. You know, <laughs> in real life. It's a lot of infrastructure and you got to maintain it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, there you go. That is it for round five. We're moving into round six. Um, we're pretty much halfway through. Yeah. And we have that mystery token now. Oh. Hopefully it's red because I want to have a no harvest. That'd be kind of nice. We're going to find out now, actually. We're going to yeah. put out our, our action spot. Let's go ahead and see what that is. Okay. Donkey, Donkey farming. You Good timing. Now that I have my mine. Sure. Um, no wood, but yep. Right. No wood. <laughs> but let's see what Fine. it is. Oh, we have to feed. It's a regular harvest. Shoot. It's a regular harvest, folks. <laughs> I struggled uh, yeah. just getting five food. Now I have to get six. Well, okay. there you go. Let's go ahead <laughs> yeah. and repopulate. All right. All right. I believe we are fully repopulated. Mm. And again, Naveen, <laughs> you're going to go first. Wow. I really need to take that stuck player back, but alas, I have not yet. There's a lot of food on it. <laughs> I also, I mean, I don't really envy your position right now because yeah. I have no idea what to do. Just, I don't know what just to saying. do. <laughs> I think we're going to excavate. All right. I'm going to go right over here, take these three, and then I'll take the one that has a uh, hallway. Um... <laughs> the, the tunnel? Tunnel. Naveen? Sorry, tunnel. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's a twin okay, tile right. with a cavern yep. and a tunnel. I'll ah, that right there. You're looking for a Some, mine as well, huh? Something. All right, I don't know what to do, uh, so I'm just gonna go and get some wood. Uh, I'm gonna go to the clearing. Okay. Because it looks like they're all the same amount of wood. Yes, but you get this benefit here. That's great. You can't turn in wood for food, right? No. <laughs> there is a building that does allow you our there furnishing. There is a furnishing that does allow you to do that, something like that. Neither of us has, so I'm gonna take. Is it this one? This one? No. It's this one. Yep, that one. And I'm going to place it here as well, just so I can keep my meadows together. Okay. Um, Doesn't matter where the doggy goes. Yeah, that's it. Very good. So it goes back to you. And that ruby mining is just so nice, but man, I don't... <sighs> yeah, why? That is so... That's four points, and you can use rubies in so many different ways. You can. If you don't want to even consider it as points, look at all that. Look I know. Look at all that, without having to go uh, on an expedition. I know. That's great. Uh, it's nice, but I'm feeling like a fourth worker soon is going to be a thing. Yeah. And I'm feeling like I need to maintain first player. <gasps> wow. I'm going to strip down three food. I'm going to get two ore. Can't believe you did that. Can I have two ore, please? Uh, sure. Yeah. I was uh, frozen. <sighs> I was frozen in that. I, I didn't want to have moment. to do that, but like their food was stacking up. I owe today. six here. <laughs> so, I mean. I think it is time. I have this uh, double meadow space yeah, over here. You have wood. Let's go sheep farming. Yeah. 
this is not bad. So it's a great time to go there. Because I have all this wood. So I can build one single uh, pasture for two wood, one uh, long pasture for four wood, and one stable for one stone. I believe you can do all of these things, just one each. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I will build a long pasture nice. for four woods. There's my four wood. Okay. And I am going to get to use this one. Yeah, it's worth four points. <laughs> yeah, and it's going right. to go right here on top of my uh, double meadow spot. So now you can house, as of right now, four animals of the same type. Of the same type. Yeah. I am going to come into six sheep here, so that is why I want to build a stable. Okay. So here's my one stone for one of my three stables. You have three of them maximum, and I'm going to go ahead and place that so in So now there. you can house eight yes. animals. So I'm going to go ahead Again, and... Again, all the same type. Take all the sheep and put them in... That area, right? Yeah, it's great. Makes sense. Look at that. Wow. Okay. I think you get one point per animal, right? It is animal. one point per yeah. animal. So the thing about this is it doesn't really matter what animal you are Just... housing. So yeah. the sheep are worth the same as the donkeys and stuff in terms of points at the end of the game. All right. Now it's back to you. All right. Well, I, I have the opportunity now I, and I need food going forward. So I'm going to go to the ore mine construction. Okay. So I'm going to gain three ore. Well, are you going to do, are you going to build that? 100%. Okay. Yeah, so, so let's get you that first. Okay. Is that so on? I believe it's on the okay. back side of this. I can never remember. These tiles are all double sided and they have different features. The way I remember <laughs> this one is like, this has a four yeah. on that side, and this has three points on the other side of it. Okay. I don't know. Interesting yeah. way of remembering. It so, honestly drives yeah. me a little bit mad. But yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to put this right there. So okay. that gets me uh, three points at the end of the game. And then I also get three ore. Yep. There you go. Perfect. And then I do get to go adventuring with this niner, which is going to turn into <laughs> a ten in a second. We call it adventuring, but it's really going on an expedition. Expedition. Yes, it's the same yeah. thing. Same concept. Yeah. So... Um, I know I'm going to need a lot of food. I know I owe or I get six total. You have to pay six. So yeah, so I have three here. Yep. And then uh, I think I'm going to have to cook a boar. <laughs> so I'm going to go boar. Okay. Uh, vegetable. Yep. Wild boar, vegetable. That's it. Um, it's well, just a level yeah, two. Just two. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted three. Yeah. yeah, I know. I could tell. And... <laughs> I felt like you were done. <laughs> yeah. And now you upgrade. I do become a tenor. To a ten. So. So. The other side of my card is now available to me. Yeah. So look at this. In the future. Uh, you could have done this. That's not Which happen. is straight yeah. up doing this, but just for one wood, no. a single pasture. I need to feed. Or you could do a two. Oh my gosh! I paid too much. <laughs> I paid too much for my long pasture. Are you a ten though? I'm not a ten, okay. but it's just the possibility of me getting that for a discount. Yeah. But. Anyway, oh well. I did not. Very good. Are yeah. you all done? Uh, that's it. Yeah, all right. that's me. So back to me so for my I final put turn. This boar actually where it belongs. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. So now back to me for my final turn. I think I am going to furnish my cavern. Uh, it's not going to be what you think. I don't have enough stuff yeah. to... Oh, do I have enough stuff for this at all? <laughs> do you change your plans midway? Okay, and now that I'm looking at the furnishing tiles that I was putting on building, I realized that I made a mistake. A on my last turn. We have a boo-boo? Uh, we have a boo-boo. Okay. And so I'm not able to build that tile unless Naveen lets me retcon something. <laughs> retcon? What is this retcon? <laughs> I was not supposed to okay. spend a stone to build that stable. Okay. Uh, I needed that extra stone. That means you would have to cook a couple of sheep. I'm okay I with would. That. I understand. You're okay with that? Go for it. For the purposes of Teaching. just showing off this furnishing <laughs> tile. Okay, sure. Okay, so thank you to Naveen's kindness. I'm going to go ahead and take that back a little bit. Okay. I'm not taking back the entire action. I'm just not building a stable because okay. I needed that stone. I needed that stone. So stable goes so, back. You gain a stone. Yes. Thank you, Naveen, for your kindness. No worries. Because I'm taking back the stable from the last action, I cannot house... Six. Six. I can only house four. So, so you would I have, have still to, gained the six. I would have still gained the six, but I would have to immediately convert two of them into food. Right. Which is fine. And the ratio, again, is one to one. Yes, for sheep. sheep. So there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. At least uh, I now have what I need <laughs> in order to build the slaughtering cave. <laughs> so it's not the best sounding room. Yikes. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not something I would build if mm -hmm. I really had... Um, a cavern. Yeah, and here's that but, inlay, by the way, on that Etsy thing that we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, the has, trays are... Every, everything kind of written there, which is nice. These trays are really great mm -hmm. because the, the thing that the game comes with is sort of just like a like a plank Less that great. you put all the tiles on and yeah. you have to just sit sit it on the table. Yeah, So definitely. it's hard for... If you're playing like a four-player game, it's hard for other people to see them. Yep. So the trays are great. Yeah, you can just pass them around. Yeah. So back to the slaughtering cave. <laughs> this cost me two stone and two wood. That's why you needed it. That's yeah. why I needed that stone. So you were eyeing it, and then you got real excited yeah. about the sheep farming. Etsy. Yes, okay. I had planned it, but I got uh, distracted by all the options on sheep farming. Sure. 
So this is going to get me two points at the end of the game. And it says for each farm animal that you convert into food, uh, moving forward, it gains me an additional food. So that is why I wanted this so badly now that I'm kind of invested mm. in sheep. So this is going to go, I mean, I guess it can Ooh, go here. I see. What? You know what? It would have been nicer if you had uh, furnished your cavern first with that, knowing that you were going to slaughter those two sheep, you would have gotten two extra food. So yes. the order of operations there. Oh, yeah. don't tell me that. <laughs> now I have regrets. It, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, it that is. would have gotten me, is. that would have netted me way more food. But right. alas, I did not do that. Right, so right, right. here we are. Um, anyway, you get an extra dog, though. I do. I get yeah. another dog. A dog friend. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah. We have two dogs here. Um, you want them to observe the sheep I from afar? I am not good at this game, <laughs> as evidenced by that conundrum. Well, debacle. I mean, because if not, you would have potentially left that all out for me, and then I could have maybe done something with it. Yeah, so, yeah. that's Think why. Think of it that way, yeah. That is why I did that. You're strategically <laughs> taking it away from me. Either way, thank you, Naveen, for yeah. allowing me to retcon and, and build that. Sure. So uh, before we continue on to the harvest and all that, I do want to get rid of one of my sheep. Okay. Because I'm going to be able to breed, and I want to have space for a fourth sheep. So I'm gonna turn this into for a two food because of my slaughtering cave. Okay, yeah, that's is... right. That's that's nice, yeah, yeah that's very great. good. So there you go, I have four. Uh, I'm gonna to need to feed six so I can turn in that mm -hmm. that vegetable. Okay. Well, that is the end of the work phase. Let's yep. go ahead and bring back our dwarves. Okay. And... Nobody went to go make family. <laughs> no. Not this time. Not this time. Nope. Uh, I definitely, I mean, we should. We should. You I definitely... Might. I may. I think a fourth worker is a sweet spot maybe yeah i, I mean know. you can get up to six technically but uh, i think only one one person one person can, can. get a six yeah. but five is your typical max right. but gosh that's mm -hmm. like a lot of resources and time it and is. food energy so let's go ahead and go into our harvest okay step one naveen yep. field phase yep. go ahead and pluck Flock. off your Good well, stuff. That's nice. Let's go ahead and feed. So we're both on the hook for six food. Six food. Here's four plus two with my vegetable. So I'm going to do three food, two from the pumpkin, and one, uh, one from the uh, grain here. Very good. So I All get right. to keep my boar. I thought I was going to have to cook one, but so <laughs> no, far so you, good. You're growing food. They're not going to breed, though. There's nowhere for them to go. You're self-sufficient. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, uh, for the first time in the game, we're going to breed. Uh, technically, you ha you can breed a wild boar. Right, but I don't have any place to house them because I don't have any fenced-in areas. This can only house a max of one pair of animals there right. at their max, so they are not going to be breeding, unfortunately. Yeah. If you had a stable on like a forest spot or on a meadow, then you could then house a third pushed it. Yeah. animal, but unfortunately Too much not. work. So I have three sheep. As long as you have two minimum, then you, you do breed. So I'm going to go ahead and make a baby sheep. Sure. So there you go. I'm now at my max in my... Uh, my pen here. Is sure. this going to be my food supply? Maybe. It, Maybe. it could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. We are going into round seven, and uh, I don't think I'm doing that well. You got honestly. some sheep. You got a couple dogs. You got a boar. Yeah, but uh, we're also at that crossroads of yeah. do I make another family member? Um, and I don't know. Are you? Are, do you feel like you're focusing on one? I mean, one, I, a certain thing. I have one vegetable, one crop, <laughs> uh, two boar. <laughs> I okay. got some places to build, you know? I don't know. No, not really. Okay, well, we're clearly not <laughs> experts at Caverna, yeah. but uh, we're going to try to make something happen within the next five rounds, sure. right? All right, here we go. Next action space. It is ore delivery. delivery. So this is a space that's going to accumulate both stone and ore. And if you take this, for each ore mine that you have, mm. uh, you get plus two additional ore. Yeah, okay. That's actually uh, really nice. Okay, we need to figure out, are we going to have a harvest or no oh, harvest? Oh, yes, that's right. Here we go. <sighs> It's a full harvest, folks. So, uh, which means these three are like really towards the end here. Yeah. Three, what, there's only four of them left. Three out of the four of these are going to be these. Are the red ones, right? Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Two yeah. of these are no un, are not harvests. And if you're going to try to like animal breed or or, or whatever you want, then it's okay. Well, here we are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and repopulate the board. Okay. Okay, the board is populated. We even populated more rubies. <laughs> I got uh, I, five of them. I got to go. Yeah. I'm sure people are watching this and like, how could this have gone for I so know. long? I know. What are we thinking? Well, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to take these rubies, five of them. 
If I do nothing with it, it's five points at the end of the game. All I'm right. probably going to do stuff with them. So that is your first action? First action. I do not get this bottom because I do not have a ruby mine. Yes. That is just too long to do. Yeah. For anybody curious as to why uh, I haven't been taking this at least, it's because I've been trying to wait until I had a ruby mine. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> It'll collect too much. For my first action, I'm going to go to ore mining. Yeah. So it's going to get me these three ore plus two additional because I have uh, an ore mine. Sure. So... Um, had I had more ore mines, then it's actually plus two per ore mine, but I just have the one. Right. All right, back to you. Back to me. Okay, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Slash and Burn over here, and I'm going to be using some of my rubies to get things going. Okay. Let me go ahead and first do the top, which is get one of these. Yeah. So how do I want to configure this? I'll just configure this like this. So I'm going to cover up this the wild boar. Floor? Yeah. Well, I'm going to cook it because I have no place to hold it. <laughs> okay. Because I already have two here in my dwelling, and that's the max I can hold. I have right. nothing fenced in. Hopefully I can do something about fencing in things. So you'll so, get two food? Two food, yeah. Okay. Because of the ratio here, which is good because we have a harvest coming up. So. Right. Uh, okay, so that's the first thing. I also um, sow my vegetables, my fields, uh, and grain also. So... Let me spend some rubies real quick. Okay. So let's take a look what I'm going to get. Uh, so I already have one of these uh, vegetables, which I know I'm going to plant uh, during that uh, portion of this turn. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to grab a second one. Okay. Uh, a grain. So okay. that's going to be two rubies. And then I want just one little field. This right one? There. A single yeah. tile field? So okay. I'm actually spending three. Wow, that is three rubies. points, Naveen. It is, but I mean, I got to try. <laughs> I got to keep myself full. Shop in today. So I need uh, one vegetable and, and one, one grain. grain. Okay, here you go. Vegetable and a grain. Vegetable grain. There so this go. I'm going to put out <laughs> right here. You went grocery shopping. You went to the farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Because the bottom portion of this, because that yeah. was an anytime action. The right. bottom portion says I can up to two new grain and two new vegetable fields. You want the most bang so for your buck. I would have liked to get a second one of these, but I could only place out two at a time, right? right. So it's going to be one, two... Three. So this is going to come populated with an additional pumpkin pumpkin, and this one's going to be populated with an additional uh, wheat or grain. Two grain. Two grain, yeah. Sorry, two grain. This one, it's it's an old one, so it does yeah. not become populated when I do this. That's right. something that we have to be aware of. That's All it. done? Yeah, that's me. All right. Back to me, Naveen. That's <laughs> looking good. That's a lot of veggies. You're really growing some, uh, some veggies here. Yes. Naveen's going the veggie strategy. I mean, each one is a point. I mean, I'm going to use them for food yeah. because we have to feed. But, yeah, that's, yeah, that is good. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we're going to have a full harvest uh, for you so mm. that you can grab those off. Yep. All right, for my next action, I'm going to go. It's no surprise. I collected all this ore. I'm going to go blacksmithing. Yeah. I'm just thankful that you didn't go there uh, before me. Uh, I only had five ore. I, I debated it, but... Well, I'm going to turn in eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And that's going to get me... The max. A level eight weapon. Okay. And then I can go on an expedition and choose three things. Sure. So I think I'm definitely going to do this uh, level one... A uh, loot, which we haven't done yet. Oh, okay. It says after the expedition, all weapons go up by one. So this is going to go up to, to a, a nine, to a ten, and then really? this will go up to an eight, and then after the expedition, oh, that'll yep. go up again to, to a, a ten. ten. Yeah. So that's one of the things, uh, and then I get two more. So one stable since okay. it's a level eight. And you don't have to pay um, wood for it, which is I nice. I don't. Yeah, and I'm going to yeah. plop it right there. Oh, interesting. I think a wild boar. And I'll make that decision whether or not to cook it later. Okay. <laughs> but right now I can store them both in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, oh yeah, that. The all weapons. The right? all weapons go up by one. Okay. So now that's, that's done. Going, huh? I'm going to increase this to a nine, which will now go to a ten. Yeah. So I'm just going to replace it. this to an eight. And the reason why is because uh, the weapon naturally goes up once the entire expedition is sure. over. Sure. Yep. So there you go. That is my 10. All right. Interesting. Wow. Nice. Thank you. Back to you for your final action. I think I've come to terms with the fact that I might not get a fourth family member. At least not yet. Not yet. And the further it goes to the end of the game, the more uh, le less likely or yeah. less valuable that becomes. I right. Because you're spending an entire action to get them, to wait yeah. for them, yeah. to then feed them when the time is right, right. To, to then you know not I be able to use them. I know what you mean. A little bit sad about it. <laughs> I think this is going to be my destruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go logging because I really wanted blacksmithing, but yeah. you know, you have to wait your turn to go. So I'm taking all this wood, which is nice. That is really it's nice. Making a mess. Uh, that's going to go there. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling that you're going to be inviting a new family member soon. Soon. Uh, so I have all that wood, and then with my one, um, it's a level ten. Uh huh. And at a level ten, 
um, I can build a, a, a two zone pasture for a discount of uh, two. So it's now two wood versus going to this location here, which would be four. So right. I'm going to pay two wood. Okay. That's going to go out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this right on top of here. And then now with that, I can actually, knowing that we're having breeding with these animals, I'm going to go ahead and just plop these in right over there. Nice. Knowing that um, that it's going to be able to get a third four. That's yeah. That's nice. Very good. My dog will still stay in the house. Okay. All right. And I think that, oh, uh, 10 goes to 11. Oh, yes. The, uh, nice. Oh, you remember this. Yeah, I, remember that. <laughs> I forgot. I there know. you go. That's big. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so back to me for my final turn. I debated going to a space like this, which will, would let me go on an expedition again, but I can't do the top. So, I don't know. I, I need to feed. You need to feed. I don't want to spend my animals. I don't have much going on. Okay. I'm going to go to Sustenance. Yeah, that's a good spot. So, I mean, three, that's half your uh, your need right there. Yeah, it's three food. I get a grain, so that's also nice. It's used, yeah. And I get one of these, a, a twin tile with a field meadow combo and i think nice. since i plopped my my uh stable here mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and do that and it's gonna get me another board which what which i can house on that spot on that spot yeah uh i think i should probably cook it though you should definitely cook it now because, because it, during breeding if you don't have a space for it you're not allowed to cook it and you know what i just realized that if my sheeps breed um, my dogs can hold them, but they need to be on a meadow space, I think. Right. I think only the, the wild boar can be on a In, a in the forest, forest yeah. Yep. So instead of placing this here, I'm going to place it here. Oh, okay. Yep. And so uh, it still gets me the wild boar because it's that spot instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I'll place, I had placed a stable there. Right, right. So I think I have to, to follow my word. Sure. <laughs> So now this way, those two dogs will be able to uh, watch the sheep. Um, yeah, that's this right. This is kind of far out, though. I do have regrets about that being there. It's okay. But it is what it is. Yeah. And so I'm going to cook, cook it, yeah. the wild boar. So it's going <laughs> nice. to get me three, uh, three food. Yeah. So naturally, you would get two. But because of your furnishing, the slaughtering cave, you get a third yeah. one. Yeah, that's nice. Right. All right. That's all the food. That's all yes, you needed. Yeah. That's all I need to feed uh, this round. Yeah, very good. All right, that was uh, a, yeah. that was a stressful round for me. Yeah. <laughs> I felt the burn there. Yeah. So let's I wasn't go ahead expecting and... a second harvest uh, back to back like that. that yeah. Was, that was a little like, oh shoot. Harvest phases yeah. have been tough yeah. because we're not prepared for breeding or or. Uh, I am or, now. Or yeah, you are now. One, one breeding uh, is gonna happen. All right, let's go ahead and bring our workers yeah. back. So one, two, and three. Yep, same. Let's go ahead and do our harvest now. So yep. same uh, procedure as normal. Field phase, Naveen, go for it. One. So much. Two. <sighs> naked field, three, four. These are going to be, become food, though, You're unfortunately. living in a world of bounty. <laughs> okay, feeding phase. I have to spend six. Because yeah, I have three. Six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. So here's the uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, grain is a... Uh, half point each at the end and I, I'd like to have these pumpkins. Right. All right. All right. There you go. So three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me have oh, those grain back. One. Sorry. Yeah. Let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a pumpkin knowing that I'm going to eventually grow one. There oh we my go. Goodness. Yeah. The Cause, options. Cause when these pluck off the max you could ever put out at one time is two and two. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to have some of these. You want to have the numbers. Yeah. Finally, we have the breeding phase. So it looks like we're both going to be breeding. Yeah. You can you uh, hold your yeah I can. Wild this boar? can hold uh, up to four uh, boar. So there, there you go. go. Boom. I have two wild boar over here, so I get another one, and this can stay right here because I have a stable on a forest spot. Yep. And then my sheep also breed, and I'm going to place that single sheep right there because I have two dogs. Yes. And so this spot can hold uh, three sheep. Three total. So yep. That's nice. All right. That's it. We are done with our harvest phase. Yeah. And we're going into round eight. So these are the last four rounds of the game. Three rounds, right? Because we uh, we don't technically have a ninth round. Eight, 10, 11, 12. Oh yeah, rounds. you're at yeah, four rounds. Yeah, yeah. because it's nah. a 12 round game nah. and uh, we're about to start round That's eight. That's right, starting round So eight. here we go, new action space <laughs> All right, what is this? And I think if I calculate it, yeah, family here we life. are. Eesh. So family life is a card that's always gonna come out in stage three. It just happened to come out last. And so this card uh, requires us to flip over Wish wow. for Children to Urgent Wish for Children. Yeah. So this, uh, basically, we're getting closer to the end of the game. And so now you can use this action spot to furnish a dwelling first and then have a child. Yes. So that is probably what Naveen is looking at. I have all these things. <laughs> yeah. 
This spot uh, just lets you do the regular have a child space and slash or you can That's also uh, great for me. Up to two yeah. new grain and two new uh, vegetable oh, fields. Oh, well, there you go. You flipped it. Oh, yes. Perfect. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. I ruined everything. That was a good skill. Okay. Yeah. That is, this is going to be our <laughs> token for the round. So this is the first time we're seeing a red uh, with a question mark. Basically what happens is if it's the first time you're seeing this, you're going to place it on the first uh, spot here yep. and you do what it says. So this round, we're going to have no harvest. Which Meaning, means no field phase, no animal breeding phase, breeding. and you don't have to feed your people. This is an infrastructure phase. Yeah. You get your stuff going so that it can breed and the next time you're going to have a harvest. Right. Okay. And so this is going to happen twice more. The next time it happens, we're going to pay one dwarf, uh, one food, sorry, per dwarf, per dwarf instead of a harvest. Right. And then the last time it happens, you're going to have a full harvest with the exception that you either skip the field phase <laughs> or the breeding <laughs> phase. Player's choice. We can choose different things. Yeah. But these two Good. things are going to happen sometime within the next uh, three rounds. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Okay. So, all right, all right let's yeah. repopulate the board. All right, and I believe that's everything. We're fully repopulated. It's yeah. going to go back to Naveen, yes. who is the forever start player. I would like to stay game. start player, yes. I go like for first it. Dibs. Well, that furnish a dwelling, I think I'm definitely going to be this going, one? yeah, furnish dwelling and uh, get myself another dwarf. So, I'm going to put that there. This one comes off the Well, side. you have to furnish a dwelling first. Oh, okay, sure. Let's furnish yeah. a dwelling and then. Okay, Do that. so the one that I really liked uh, is called Mixed Dwelling. It's going to okay. cost five wood and four stone. It's worth four points at the end of the game. Nice. Uh, it's room for an additional dwarf, which is what I'm going to be um, having right now, and one pair of animals. Ooh. So that seems pretty good to me. So yeah. I'm going to go and take that. Nice Mixed Dwelling. <laughs> You're also impressed by I the impressed Etsy trays. I like that. Etched in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that there. So it's going to cost me the five wood. So here five it is. Wood. One, two, three, four, five. And, and four stone. Now I have no resources. <laughs> that's but that. You will have an additional family I member. I will. And which... now I can go ahead and place this on top to wrap up the turn. Loads more value. There you go. You didn't Ooh. want just the three gold points uh, right there? No, that's, I mean, I would. Also an option. If it had an and, I would definitely take it. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's me. All right. Back to me. What are we going to do here? Well, for my first action, I am in dire need of resources. So for since I have to send out this dwarf anyway... Might as well uh, get some wood. Yep, sure. So I was very jealous of that logging spot. That's a lot of wood. Last round. You, you can build a lot of furnishings there. I mean, this is what's really prevented me from growing my family. Yeah. I, I don't have any uh, any resources to build an additional dwelling. Too much ore. Don't get caught in that position. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't obsess over going on <laughs> expeditions. Right. <laughs> It'll lead you nowhere. <laughs> so anyway, that's me. Back to you. Oh, boy. All right, knowing that we're going to get negative points if we don't fill out our board, right. uh, I think it's time to go ahead and get some resources while they're abundant. Uh, Naveen! <laughs> Naveen! <laughs> and get that. So let's do that. take that. I do. <laughs> and I'm just going to place it right into this slot, covering up that two food. Ugh. So can I have two food, please? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Of course. Okay, there you go. Thank You're you. going to need it I'm for your need extra it. baby My sometime baby. in the future. Yeah. All right. I think if I don't go here, Naveen will. So I'm going to go I mean, black yeah. sniffing. <laughs> yeah, I would have gone there. For <laughs> it would sure. have been nice to go with my tenor, but it is what it is. Yeah. So three things. I'm going to get a um, a green, a vegetable, okay. and then a stone. Green, I vegetable, stone. I have been really needing stone. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and mm -hmm. take that now. There we go. So get some stuff, yeah. And then, of course, this is going to go up to a nine. So leveling up yeah. as we go. That's good. All right. Back to you. Mm, okay. So final action. Final action. There's a couple options. I'm, I'm debating doing a ruby mine. I, I might just do it. Yeah. So if I, because it's worth four points, plus it comes popular with a ruby because it would be next to an ore mine, mm -hmm. correct? So that, that's technically five points. It's because it'll be on, yeah, on, on a deep tunnel. On a deep tunnel. Let's just do it. Let's push button. So I mean, I'm doing the ore portion, the bottom there. Okay. So I get that. No, no, you're doing the top. Um, oh no, no, you're doing the bottom. You're right. Yeah, yeah. One plus, I get one because yeah. it's going to be on top of a or next to an ore mine. Yeah, you're building it on a deep tunnel. There we go. So it's going to come with a ruby. So here you go. That yeah. is your ruby. The ruby. Yep. Congratulations. You Thanks. are definitely in the ruby game. I got yeah. I have three of them. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my final turn, um, it feels weird wasting a ten expedition mm -hmm. weapon person <laughs> gosh the addiction is real yeah so i'm gonna go to slash and burn oh yeah i mean because, you got all the veggies yeah here. i got all this stuff here so let me get you uh this tile thank that's you that's great for you and i guess i'll have to put it here right yeah so you get a boar so i get a boar uh which i don't know i can't hold right no i can't so i'm gonna cook it okay it's gonna give me three food so here we are 
Uh, that slaughtering cave is really put. It's, it's good. You're putting uh, it to very use. good use. Yeah. Okay. But I do get to plant my crops so for the first time ever. Two and two. So, no, I only have three. Okay, yep. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. But at least it gets me some stuff for the only, for the last harvest that we'll have, the yeah. last full harvest that we'll have. Wherever it is. Right. Which is fine because they will still uh, give you points at the end of the game. Yeah. If they're if still on your, on your field, fields. it's perfectly fine. And yeah. it still covers up spots, which is the other uh, kind of scary part, right? Yeah. All right, that is it. That's it for the round. That yeah. is it for round. What is this round? Uh, that was eight. Round we're skipping eight. nine. Oh my gosh. So we're going into ten. And no harvest, so we're just gonna go ahead and take our workers back. Yes. And so I have four workers now. This is good. Uh, one, I envy you two, so much. Three. And uh, we're just one four. And you didn't even have to pay. You didn't have to pay. <laughs> I did not this time. Gosh. I will next time though. All right, so we are skipping round nine and right. going straight to round ten. Which, which is now is, stage I guess, four cards. Technically, our round nine. Our round nine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what the next action is. Stage four card. Okay. Ooh. Ruby delivery. Hey. It's just a better one of these. <gasps> it's you get two. It'll have two and plus one if you have at least two ruby mines, Nadine. Oh, never mind. So that's so it's gonna be the same. For you. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And then let's see what we have. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna have to pay one food uh, per dwarf instead okay. of a harvest, which means you don't get your goodies, you don't breed. So I'm committed to four. You of them. To, yeah, okay. you're on the hook for four. For I'm four. on the hook for three, mm. which fantastic I have right now. Don't have to worry about it. Okay. So let's go ahead and populate the board. Sure. All right, we're all set up. Naveen gets first and last turn. First and last, this yes. Round. Uh, Oof. Go for There's it. a lot to do. I don't. I don't really know what direction I'm going here. Yeah, look at all these action spaces. There's a lot of actions now. <laughs> this is now the menu. This is yeah. what happens by the end of Caverna. You Ooh, just boy. have options. Stuff. You know what? That ore delivery place is just looking too good. Oh, right that's now. So, so nice. I'm, I'm going to go over there. So I'm just going to grab all these resources. Plus, I get an additional two yeah. for each ore mine. I only have one ore mine. There you go. But I'll take it. That's so nice. Yeah. I wanted that spot. I wanted that spot so badly. It's terrible going second, second, I will say. Yeah. Do I claim start player then? Could you imagine going seventh? <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> I don't that know. That is true. Like. It's not as bad going second. <laughs> well, I, I think I need some stone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to go excavate. So it's going to be three stone. And I'm going to do a double uh, a double cavern Ooh. twin tile and go up here. So it's going to get me the two food. Yep. I want to at least reap all the benefits of my board yeah, sure. before the end of the game. Definitely. So there you go. There you go. You get your food Thanks. that you need to feed. Uh, all right. Back to you. Uh huh. All right. I have a lot of ore. And I see the blacksmith. No, no, no. Ready. Me. <laughs> well, you have no ore. <laughs> I just like this. <laughs> One, two, three. Two, three. Quantity. Four, five. <laughs> six, seven, and eight. We are becoming uh... an eight level weapon man. Naveen, it is painful uh, watching you just rise above your <laughs> splendor, your your estate. I don't know. We'll see what happens when we score. I mean, I end. hope your estate is just so far away from mine that I don't have to watch you grow. We're, we're friends. I guess it's not bad. Yeah, you got something going. I don't know why. I don't know why I feel like I'm just doing so awful. Maybe that's Caverna. I, I think it's because I got the third dwarf yeah. first, and then I'm on the fourth one, and you're not on the fourth one yet. So it feels I, like, I why right. not? I think I put yeah. all my value in how many workers do you have, and how... It's not about the points. It's about the workers. Right? Yeah, it's about yeah. the workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever has the most workers wins. <laughs> Oh, it's good for me. <laughs> I know. All right. All right. Well, touche. So now I have. Now I get to pick three things, and I think on this expedition, I'm gonna grab a donkey. Okay. Wood. Uh huh. And a stone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Going real basic. You just really wanted that donkey. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's not go with wood. Let's take a sheep instead. Okay. I think so. Yeah. 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 You don't need the wood. Then. No. There you go. There's your sheep. Uh, so we have the sheep. The yeah. sheep is going to hang out in here. Okay. Stone is, of course, going to go there. <laughs> and then um, this donkey is going to hang out in my mine. Yeah, nice. Yeah, remember, each mine can hold a donkey. So I have another spot for another donkey there. Sweet. Yeah, that's it. All right. Yeah. So now it goes back to... Uh, oh, no, yeah. Now it goes up to a nine, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. So now it goes back to me. Mm -hmm. You took the blacksmithing spot. Yeah, I had to. All right. For my next turn, I think I'm going to go here okay. to ore mine construction so I can go on an expedition. It's uh, two items. I'm at a level nine now. Oh, my gosh. Does that change what I wanted to do? Mm. I think I have to go with my original plan, although I will say that that level nine uh, benefits are really sweet. It's either a single one of these tunnels yep. 
or a single pasture for only one wood. Okay, I'll remember that for the future. Single pasture is worth two points as well. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get a stone so that I could furnish um, a cavern for my second benefit. So I'm going to... Uh, can I see the tray, please? Sure. I think I wanted to take this one, the weapon storage. So it's three wood and two stone. Okay. So here we go. Three wood. I have to make sure that I have enough for my last action. Three wood, two stone. Okay. Okay. And this is basically going to give me three points at the end of the game for each of my weaponed dwarfs. So you know you're getting six points. Yes, it's six points uh, right now. With so more coming. Yeah. Put this right there. All right. Ooh, I've, I have good. Good. furnished. And uh, now this is going to go up to a 10. I should have grabbed that thing. So that's it. Okay, seeing as we're going to have to pay for food, at least I'm going to have to pay for food, mm -hmm. I'm going to want to go get some cheap food right now. So I'm going to go to sustenance here. I'm oh, going to okay. take these two. Sure you don't want to take first player uh, as you... Have had. It's okay. This is going to come with uh, this tile, which I really want more and than grain. anything. And a grain. Um, so let's go ahead and get that said tile. And I'm going to put it right over here so maybe I can box this in in the future. Yeah, it's Pretty looking nice. good. Oh, it's interesting that you really don't want that wild boar. I, I do. I do, but I can grow down this way at the very, very end. I can't yeah. even house it during the, you know. During yeah. The, I, I guess I can, but. I'm just kidding. I, you're judging me. <laughs> no. All right. All right, for my last turn, I had a feeling Naveen wouldn't go here because of obvious reasons. Yeah. So I'm going to get my last family member. I'm not going to five. I'm just going to stop at four. Yeah, four. I've worked all game for this. Okay. So I'm going to start by furnishing a You're going to want to arm them all. That's for sure. Huh? You're going to want to arm them all with your weapon storage. I, uh, yeah. That is kind but, of like... Oops. All right, here's my four stone, almost lost one, and... Or sorry, four wood. Four wood. And three stone get the basic for a basic dwelling. Totally. I figured it's worth three points. I could have paid a stone less. But, you know, I wanted the points. <laughs> Stone is not abundant right now, I will say. Don't say that. <laughs> look at look at the board. You can go on an expedition you, you can. and get one stone. Sure. There's always supplies. I don't know. I'm I'm living in the now. I'm not going to worry <laughs> about that. Know your truth. Uh, no, yeah. Yes. I'm going to put that input there because um, Mama has a weapon. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Back to you for your final turn, Naveen. All right. All right, last guy is going to go out to logging. I'm going to collect all this wood. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to go on a single adventure. So that 11 is going to eventually become a 12. Right. I think I'm just going to make a pasture. So I'm going to, that thing that I constructed on the previous turn, I'm uh -huh. just going to create this. And the way I do that is with a, uh, a level 10. Um, so but I only pay two, pay two wood. wood versus four going somewhere else. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you. And mm -hmm. here is your level 12. Yeah weapon Thanks. that's real nice yeah I'll so take it. i'll take that okay perfect I'll thank you on here eventually there we go all right that's the end cool so uh let's take back our workers and then we will pay one food per dwarf okay with no added benefits here's my four food unfortunately uh, there we go i think I'll i'm gonna put the the weaponed uh dwarves in uh <laughs> in their own dwellings. in their own little spot that's what i did yeah. oh and here's that four food Okay, because you have four, I four. dwarves, yep. same with me. Yep. One, two, three, There it four. goes. All right. All that food gone. Suddenly day. I have no more resources. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. So that is it for round nine slash ten. Let's go into round 11. This is yeah, the penultimate last round two rounds. of our game. So okay. make it count, Naveen. All right. New card is this one. Oh, another adventure. adventuring. So this is like blacksmithing, except you can go on two uh, adventures of uh, level one each, level mm -hmm. strength of one each. Right. Which means your weapon is going to go up twice. Boom, boom. Yeah, so you'll right. make a weapon, you go on one, it'll, it'll level up, Ooh. and go on another one, it'll level up again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's nice to have nice. Uh, towards the end of the game here. So let's go ahead and flip this over. And, oh, it's a full harvest. That full is quite harvest. a convenient. Full harvest, okay. Because we're going to get our full harvest before we have to skip the field phase or the breeding that phase. That means I owe eight food. Game. Well, let's go ahead and repopulate. Sure. All right, we're all set up. We realized Monique left uh, a wrong token out there and pulled the, the other one to fix that. <laughs> um, so we are ready to go. And I have some space that I want to get filled up on my board. So yep. I'm going to go right into drift mining. Not enough stone coming back, but I'll take it. Okay. So these two, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those tiles. And I definitely want to orient this in this manner. Ah, another ore mine coming your Possibly. way. Possibly, yes. So that's okay. Well, I am going to take this while I can. We've yeah. got some rubies. So you get three of them, huh? I got three of them. Nice. There's another spot right there. Yeah, it's another spot. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going to grab these sheep now. Um, <laughs> okay. Right there. Nice. Um, I'm going to... 
I'm basically going to omit the top two, which cost me wood to, to build pastures. Yeah. I, I literally have nowhere to do that. You'll build a stable? I'll build a stable, though, okay. for one stone. Um, All right. I believe it's one stone, right? Yeah. To build a stable. Yep. And let's just go ahead and put this stable right in there. So now this entire thing can hold eight max, right. which is great because we're going to bring in oh, your sheepies. sheepies here. I do have this sheep that's hanging out here, so I don't want to lose track of it. Let's go ahead and put that right there. So I can hold a pair here and also a pair in the future mm -hmm. here. So I don't have to worry about uh, too much uh, yeah. loss of animals. I do need to feed myself, though. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's me. Okay, well, um, I thought that that would be gone. Maybe I, I, I wanted just... to, but man. Is that, is that ridiculous to do that? I don't know. I'm going to just do it, maybe. Yeah, you just picked up six points if you yeah, did. Yeah, I guess I'll just do it. There I'm going to take some, some more rubies. Sure. And... That's me. It's back to you. Mm -hmm. oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Okay, <laughs> that was not it. part of my uh, original plan. <laughs> the long-term strategy. The long-term, yeah, the long-term strategy. We got to feed. Was missed. We have to feed. Are we feeding this? We route? are. Oh. For eight. <gasps> For eight. Hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reason why I got the rubies was because I wanted to spend one to send out one of my uh, dwarves out of order. Out of order. <laughs> yeah. Going? I'm going to go here. Oh man. Yeah, and I'm going nice. to take uh, three things. Uh, using that Ooh. spot, it's a 10 now. So I get to choose three things. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to furnish a cavern. Okay. So I'm going to furnish... Oh, I only have one space left. I'm going to take the cuddle room. <laughs> so it's uh, it it's only it's costs cute. one wood. Which is what you got. So, which is what I have, yeah. <laughs> you you use what you have, yeah, right? Okay. So it's worth two me, points. It's worth two points and it can hold the sheep. It says room for as many sheep as you have uh, dwarves. So it can literally hold my four sheep. So, okay, so you're clearing some space. I'm clearing some space. Uh, the second thing is I'm going to take two uh, ore. So oh, interesting. Go ahead and do that. It's in your best interest to weaponize yourself, aren't you? And then, since it's a level 10, I think I'll take a cow. Time I to just, get a cow, huh? Yeah, I guess I'll deal with where to put the cow later. So uh, let's put yeah, the cow there. Put it there. That's fine. <laughs> And figure that out. So that's it. Those are the three things yeah. um, that's going to level up to an 11. Mm -hmm. All right. It is back to you. Ooh, okay. I really wanted that spot, but I also definitely want this to happen for me. So okay. I love this for me. So I'm going to go <laughs> I love that there. for you too. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and make myself an ore mine. So I'm going to place it over this. Nice. Is it uh, this? I think it's oh, on Here we go again. Side. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to place it on that. Okay. In addition to that, I get three ore. Yes, you do. Which is always welcome. There you go. That's nice. Uh, and then I get to go uh, on an expedition for two. Yep. And I know the first one I want to do is furnish a cavern. Okay. I've identified a cavern that I really liked, or a furnishing that I really liked, and it is called Stone Storage. Ooh. Now, I have 10 stone here. To build this, it doesn't require any, and it's one point at the end of the amber stone. Nice. So it's going to cost me nice. one, wow. two, three uh, wood. Don't spend your stone anymore. No. And three a, wood and a, uh, an ore. ore. So I'm going to go ahead and place this out there. So that's my first one. So if I, as long as I accumulate more stone, then we get more points. You got to keep the stone away, away from, from Naveen. Me. And honestly, I might, knowing that we're going to have breeding, the mm -hmm. only animal that I have that is not going to breed is a donkey. So I might just grab one Okay. Uh, because I can, I can put two animals here. I also have this room that can house animals. Sure. So. So we're in good shape. Remember, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the game, for each animal type you don't have, it's minus two points. Yeah. So. It's, uh, so eventually I'll try to get tough. some cattle, but I'm going to go ahead and put these two donkeys. Uh, these are my pair in here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then you are going to go up to a uh, 10. 10. So there you go. Cool. All right. Back to me. And now I must put out this dwarf because it does not have a weapon, but uh, it'll have a weapon now because <laughs> it's going to go adventuring. Yeah. So they are going to gain a level two <laughs> weapon, not strong. But solely for the purposes of my weapon storage. You, you can just find your eventual one instead of replacing every time, I guess. Sure. Okay. So you know you have a, a one thing you can get at a level two. Yes. One thing that I can get at a level two because of this uh, one expedition. Right. So, which is basically just these four things. Yeah. Sheep. Do you can get a dog. I could. Dogs are points. I will take a sheep because it's worth the same amount of points as a dog, but the okay. sheep you can turn in for food. Sure. And I can still hold one right there. So that's my one. So now this goes up to a three, technically, and, and I can take another yeah. thing, and I'm going to take a stone. So finally, it'll rest at a four. Yeah, so it, it was a two. Yeah. It leveled up to a three, and then now that the entire expedition's over, it's now a four. Yes. Okay, perfect. That is right. So here we are. Perfect. Okay, 
So that's it for my turn. Back to you. Ooh, okay. Final turn. This 12 is a problem because I want it to be juicy. But I'm seeing this ruby mine over here. Yep. Sounds great. Let's go ahead and just do it. I'm going to put this on so I get a ruby mine. Yeah, there you go. it's going to come preloaded with a ruby. With a ruby. With four points. Which is what you want. Anything I would try to get wood to try to create a, a furnishing is going to cost me resources. So I'd rather just do it. Because you're trying to hold turn. on to I'm your to stone hold now. Hold on to my stone, exactly. Which is, is tough. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm so glad that you <laughs> left me with the donkeys. <laughs> yeah. My friends. So I'm not going to build anything else. I'm just going to take the donkeys. And I think, let's see, let's be creative. I can plop one there yep. in the ore mine. I can, oh, I, I just have to move my cattle. Oh my gosh, we have to feed. Yes. Can I retcon my turn? <laughs> oh, what did you do? I, I went here and just got the ruby mine with a ruby. Uh, that, okay, what yeah. would you rather do? I would rather go get some food somewhere. So let me give you the ruby back. Okay, and, then, and uh, the mine? And this the one? mine, uh, it's this one right here. Okay, not that it really it doesn't matters. Matter, yeah. <laughs> so. I've just realized that we need food. Don't take my donkeys. I'm not going to take the donkeys. I know that that was your intention there. I, I'm I'm just going to go to make sure I'm starting there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, not that. Not that I you would. were going to go there, but yeah, yeah that, that would have been a big problem for All me. Right. Well, you also get two additional ore. I do. Thank you. Okay, so Sorry back to the that. donkeys. <laughs> well, let's make some space uh, for some animals anyway. So I'm going to cook the wild boar Which because I won't be able to hold it anyway. That's three so, for you. Three food. Yep. So you're so halfway I need to four more. Yeah. One, two, three. Cook some donkeys. I'm gonna cook two of the donkeys. Yeah. Because by cooking them, it's a three. Two I donkeys get... gets you three, but yeah. because of your thing, you get four. Yes, exactly. So two donkeys, which I guess is the same. Honestly, it's the same as cooking two uh, sheep. Okay. If I move the cattle here, which is what's gonna have to happen anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. and then I move the uh, two wild boars into here then i can house my donkeys i think it'll have to be like this yeah because your sheep breeding is good because these two dogs will allow you to hold one more sheep right right so you're good on that so i can do that but now i won't be able to breed a donkey so i think i'm gonna cook two of them you know what actually i'm just gonna cook one okay. I i'm gonna i'm gonna convert <laughs> one donkey one into donkey. two food because i am going to get my vegetable uh, during the harvest. Okay. So I can turn that in for an additional two. Okay, there you go. Happy? Everybody is settled. I won't <laughs> be able to have another uh, wild boar baby, Okay. but it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. All done? Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, we're going to have a harvest. Let's bring back our workers. Workers come back. So up. I'm going to make sure One, to take them from the two, proper places this time. Right. Two and three, four. These two. Okay, looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and have our our true harvest for the last time in the game, field phase. Right. I get to participate this I'm time. Plucking everything <laughs> off except for one. Yay! Very good. Okay, feeding phase. So now we're on the hook for eight. I have here, this should be six, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus my vegetable makes it eight. So. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna have to get a little creative here. So this is four. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna one, put one. two of these grain as five. Okay. I'm going to keep these because maybe I want to do something. Or with no, them. each grain is one. So oh, each grain. Six. six. Okay. And then we are just going to go ahead and get rid of a boar. <gasps> Seven, eight. Oh. I know. Okay. That's well, you met goes. your your feeding, feeding uh, quota. Yeah. So at least there's that. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and breed. Okay. My sheep will breed. So I can put one more there because yeah. of my two dogs. I also get one sheep. You also get a sheep. Uh, my wild boar will breed, but I don't have space to hold them. So, you cannot so I, cook it. I cannot. Do you get one? I do get one. Yeah. So here's so that. Some space a little bit. My donkeys, they do breed because I have four of them, and I can store one in my ore mine. Same. Two gets me one to my mine. Nice. There you go. And I have three different mines, so technically, you know, one mine per yeah. donkey. So this works. Yeah, that's okay, awesome. Cool. All right, that is it. Yep. That is, we are done with the harvest, and we're going to move into our final round final oh my round. gosh oh, last wait. round of the game i'm seeing a lot of empty spaces <laughs> yeah. uh, i don't know what this is going to look like but i guess we'll see right okay so our last action card is going to be coming out this is the last one and it is ore trading or trading Ooh. so you can turn in two or three times for two points plus a food oh my gosh so this is going to be the round where we have to feed you're still on the hook for eight food but you are going to skip either the field phase or the breeding phase. So we do have to Good feed. Choice. You do have to feed. Feeding is a must. It is oh, a must. Okay. Let's uh, repopulate the board. Okay. All right. Last round. Yes. This is everything that we have out there. It's all populated. 
It is, it is time to go. It is the end. We have a lot of empty spaces here, just, <laughs> just so you know. There's a lot of negatives. But uh, here we go. Last round. Naveen, again, you are first. Okay. As always. Uh, I definitely wanted that ruby mind. So, mind, mine. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do that oh. right now. Oh, you're constructing a I'm ruby gonna mind. I'm going to construct it. Ah. It's worth four points, plus yeah. it comes with a ruby so because I have points. a four mind. So it's really worth five, yeah. It's really unfortunate. I'll take it. I really snoozed on that spot. If there was one, <sighs> one true... Uh, regret that i have it's not going there once even i prepared for it yeah. at the very beginning of the game <laughs> that's right well seeing as you now have two ruby mines i can't let you have the ruby delivery yeah. spot because that's yeah. that's just four four points too it would have been five because it requires you to have two ruby mines to get an additional one I yeah have two additional. so that's pretty nice i mean you're pretty much at a point here where you're yeah. calculating how many points you're getting per turn yeah uh, which is Something that we probably should have been considering sooner. Yeah. If you if you play the game several times back to back, this is something you'll be thinking of. Right. But right. Uh, definitely in the last round. Nice. Yeah, I, I wanted that one, but uh, I'm not getting it anymore. So <laughs> let's go to ore trading. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's so a this good this spot. is a very nice one for me right now. So I can turn in two ore. Yeah. Uh, for two points and a food, yes. and I can do this up to three times. How many times are you gonna do it? I'm gonna do it all. So uh. I'm gonna do this, uh, three times, so six total ore. Here so you six go. points and three food, I believe. Six points and three food. That, that seems, is that such a nice good. spot. Plus, we need to feed at the end of this. So. It's a nice spot to take uh, when you have the right amount of ore yeah. <laughs> for the moment. So, nice. Thanks. All right, back to me. I need some stone and I need some cavern spaces. Yeah. So, I have to send out this dwarf. It's the lowest weapon. I'm going to go here. So, two stone yep. and the double... The double cavern. You can do the double cavern? I am. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter where I put it now. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it right there. Okay. That's me. Mm -hmm. Back to you. Don't take the spot that I need, please. <laughs> Seeing that I don't have any wood and I want to use these uh, two dwarves that have uh -huh. weapons, I'm going to go to logging. Okay. I'm going to get myself this four wood, which yeah. is great. And then we're going to go on a little, a little adventure here. Okay. What are you taking? One thing. One thing. So uh, I have up to a 10, but what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be doing a furnish a cavern action just one time. Okay. And so the one I'm going to do, it, it's interesting. Uh, it's peaceful cave. Okay. It's going to cost me two wood. So the wood I just acquired. Uh -huh. Plus two stone which is kind of a bummer because i get one point per stone but the cave itself is worth two points so you're netting nothing i'm netting nothing technically for that but it says uh, you may trade your weapons for food at a one-to-one -one ratio according to their strength interesting so i'm gonna go ahead and take this place it down in there okay and um Knowing that this is a this is a done deal weapon, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well, I don't need that weapon anymore because I'm gonna trade it and get. Well, 10. you might as well take eleven. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I yes. don't know if it matters. So I don't think food is worth anything. That's right. So it's gonna update to an eleven. Yeah. And then I'm gonna trade it all for a bunch of food. Oh okay. So eleven. That's an food. interesting, uh, an interesting furnishing tile. Yeah. So now I don't have to worry about food because I I'm, I owe eight and I'm gonna have fourteen. All right, here are your eleven, 11 foods <laughs> pieces, of, no. your eleven meals. Yes. Thank you. A lot of plates with a that's knife. That's a on it. that's a good one to have early, so you can kind of build up a weapon and then stash and just be like, I'm done. your food, yeah, yeah, for the rest of the harvest. Yeah. Here that's are the fun. resources I had to spend to do oh, that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a neat one. Yeah. All right, back to me, and uh, I'm so glad you did not go here because I would like to go expeditioning. I wanted to go there, but I needed two wood in order to get that building. That, that building, and uh, that, so I could only get one from from using that card. I see. So you yeah. needed it. So that's exactly what you needed. You needed wood, I, and I needed then wood and the ability to, to yeah. furnish. I wanted to go there though, blacksmithing. Okay, so I get three things. And I think, I think I'm going to furnish a cavern. That's the whole reason why I got that. Yeah, it makes sense. So I'm going to build this furnishing tile. Okay. So this is the fodder chamber. It requires me to spend two grain, which is interesting, and okay. one stone. And so at the end of the game, this is going to get me uh, one point for every three farm animals. Ooh. So I think it's technically like five points what? because I don't foresee myself... Um, I don't foresee myself taking the breeding phase. So I think I'm just pretty much stuck with what I have. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, and I think I'm just going to take a cattle since it's a level 10 and okay. 
Uh, convert it to food immediately. So, so that'll give me four three food. Three plus one because of your furnishing. Right. Yeah. So if I do a uh, a field phase, then I'll be able to take the pumpkin. So two, three, four, plus this four food oh, from nice. the cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the third thing, I'm just going to take two points. Two points, yeah. Because it's it's there. And I can't really see anything else that'll be uh, more advantageous. I'm sure if I did some canoodling with my rubies, <laughs> then maybe, maybe I can do some sort of like snaking uh, path to, to get something better. Yeah, I, but yeah. Th I'm not good at Ruby usage. Yeah. <laughs> Ruby uh, usage is hard. Hard. All right. So uh, this upgrades to an 11. Not that it matters anymore. All right. Back to you. Very good. For your final action. All right. I have these veggies here, veggies and grain, and I have perfectly four locations right there. Oh, and I have gonna... this dwarf who's very strong. They're going to go adventuring. Oh. They're going to do the double adventure. Okay. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to, because it's a 12, this uh -huh. is the one time I can finally do this. I'm going to sew. Nice. So I'm going to put... I forgot that that was there. Yeah, 12. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then these are both going to come with two right. additional. And this is going to come with uh, one additional on that. Wow. Out of 12, yeah. So you... Wow. Hold on. So here's your grain. Because okay. it's two on top of each. And right. then here's your vegetable. And if it wasn't clear, uh, it's kind of tiny on the loot card. It's a, uh, if you have a level 12 weapon, it says you can sew, you can literally do this action, but for free, for as free. long as you go expeditioning. Yeah. And it's the same thing, up to two new grain and two new vegetable yeah, you, fields. You uh, gave me a little too much. I had one already on there from earlier. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Yeah. So you, you uh, planted three of them total? Yeah, and I need a okay. pumpkin though. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it was two pumpkins, two grain with one already there. Got it. So that one didn't get repopulated. There Very you go. Good. That looks good. Wow, that looks great. That looks good. Okay, so then that turns into a 13. Yep. But honestly, there is no real 13 on here. Um, yeah, so it's basically everything that's not 14. <laughs> you yeah. cannot breed up to two types of farm animals right. or uh, put a, a single cavern. Yeah, so the one animal I'm missing is cattle. Uh -huh. So it's a three-point swing, right, if I have cattle. Because if you don't have an animal, it's minus two. But if you right. do have it, it's plus one plus per one. animal. So it's really a three-point swing there. Can you hold it? I can hold it because I have uh, this area here. Okay. I, can, I can move the donkeys into the mines. So I'm going to go ahead and take that cattle if you don't mind. All right. Uh, three points is better than two points that I'm allowed there. Yes, so, there <laughs> that is true. That's true. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to go ahead and put it into the mixed dwelling. Why not? Okay. And here is your weapon. I'm a 14er. You're a 14er. I got to the end. Again, not that it, not that it matters. Um, but there you go. There you go. All right, for my final turn, I too will finish off with an expedition. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do uh, the same kind of two things that I did earlier. I'm going to get two points sure. and I'm going to furnish uh, my last cavern right there. Nice. So here's the two points. Okay. And um, I'm going to build the writing chamber. Ooh. So this costs two stone. That was Which why it was exactly very important for me to take oh, that. Oh, that's why uh, you needed that one. Yeah, there. excavation spot. Got it. I didn't want to have to expedition for stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's going to prevent <laughs> up to seven negative points. <laughs> nice. Now, at the end of the game, I'm going to have six negative points. So it's worth one less than its maximum. But it's pretty good. Because you have one of each type of animal. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, I do. I have one of each type of animal. Right. But uh, there you go. I believe... Well, that's, that's good. It. That means that tile is basically worth six points. Yeah. yeah yes. Great. Yes. It, it's worth six points. And for good measure, let's go ahead and and, uh, get, you stronger. and get me stronger. Okay. All right. Cool. That is the end. That's it. Yeah. The end of our actions. Let's have our non-harvest, <laughs> which right. is skipping the field or the breeding phase. Which phase are you skipping? Uh, I'm going to skip the field phase because I have enough food that I don't need to feed from the uh, vegetables I have. Okay. Well, I'm going to skip the breeding phase, which means I get to do my field phase. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So I'm taking these three. And then now let's feed. So I have okay. to feed eight. I have the four that I acquired earlier from uh, converting the cattle plus five, six, seven, eight. Nice. And you? Uh, well, I have all that food that I got from that one uh, time I turned in my weapon for food. So here's eight. <laughs> that's right. Too bad you don't have some kind of furnishing tile that's like. I'm sure there's one out there. I don't know these tiles well enough. Point per leftover uh, food. food yeah. For not wasting your food. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now go ahead and do your breeding phase, Naveen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and go with the, the sheep. Yeah. So I'm going to get one. So this can house up to eight. All right. Uh, the go. boar will also get one. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the cattle will not, but the donkeys will. There and you I go. do have another mine. Yeah, I you have a ton of mines. Yep. They're just dancing around They're your, around. <laughs> your cavern, your mountain. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I believe that's it. That's everything. That's yeah. the end of the game. Mm -hmm. We're completely done with all 11 rounds. We're going to go into final scoring. How do you feel before we do this? 
Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I can't tell what my score is going to be here. I'm, I, I have a very tough time with knowing where I stand in Caverna specifically. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't blame you. It's yeah. just like, it's, it's very sandboxy. Yeah. So uh, fortunately, the game comes with a score sheet. So I'm just going to go down this uh, this column and we'll score that way. Oh, there. Yep. Cool? Cool. And before we score, uh, we came to an awful realization. I made a mistake. <laughs> that, uh, we didn't start with the right amount of resources. Yes. So I guess first player gets one food, and second player also gets one food. Yeah, which... I made a mistake. I thought for some reason first player gets one and second player gets two. So, so I was first player, and we gave Monique an extra food. I got an extra food. But I, uh... I, I'm sure you would have been able to feed and use. And, and, You're sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I benefited from that. So anyway, yeah, if you go okay. to play this, second player also just gets one food. All right, first thing is one gold gold point per farm animal and dog. So just count up. When do you go first? Okay, so I have 2, 4, 6, 7, uh -huh. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17. I believe 17. Wow, yeah. I ended up having a lot too. Um, I have I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17, okay. Yeah, the same amount. Cool. It's bad because I told myself I was going to go for an animal strategy. <laughs> and here we are tying. <laughs> Minus two points per uh, missing type of farm animal specifically. So you don't have to have dogs, just... Uh, we have we both have everything. Uh, sheep, boar, donkeys, and my lone cattle. Yeah, all right. So then... Yeah, I think same uh, for you, right? Yeah, no minus points there. Cool. Now, grain and vegetables. It's one gold point per vegetable and okay. half uh, points per grain rounded up. Okay. So mine is easy. You're I'm easy. just going to go and one get point. one point. Okay. We only have two grain. Sure. And you? Uh, okay, so... In the pumpkin vegetables, I have four, uh, and then it's going to be five, six, seven, and then a half makes it eight. Okay, so these are separate. So you have right. four points on that, and then it's one, two, three, four, technically. Oh, I see. Because, it, yeah. Yeah, it's different. Uh, They're different scoring parameters. I so see. four and four. Four and four. Okay. okay. Same math, but yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Uh, one point per ruby. So okay. one, two, three, four. I have six. Uh, I have four. Okay. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> One point per dwarf. I think we're four and four, right? Uh, four and four, yeah. Okay. Okay, it's close. Uh, unused space. Yeah, this is where I have a problem. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So I get minus five, I believe. Okay, that's minus five. Uh, I technically have minus six. Right. But that's going to come back uh, with, I, the negatives. with the right in the chamber. Yeah. Right. Furnishing tiles, pastures, and mines. So anything that has these kind of a uh, shield with numbers in them, basically. Yes, anything with those with the with the shields, but not the yellow, not the yellow, uh, not the end game ones. Yeah, those ones. Anything with the asterisk or basically any of the yellow furnishing tiles, they have their own uh, scoring parameter. Sure. So it's going to be four plus four, eight. Uh huh. Eleven. Yep. Uh, fifteen. Yep. Sixteen, seventeen, twenty. Mm hmm. Twenty-four. Uh, twenty-seven. Oh. What about this one? 31? Oh, yes, thank you. 31. The cow is covering. <laughs> yes, 31. So I have four, uh, 7, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17. 17. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My cuddle room. It's a cute room, though. The cuddle it's room. Okay. okay, now for the yellow. Okay. The yellow uh, building. So I essentially just have one of them. Uh, it's this one is to hoard as much stone as possible. It's one a stone sword. Stone. So I think it's two, four, six, eight. eight nice. Points. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that worked out. Uh, I have three of them, so this is going to prevent up to seven negative points. So it's basically just the six points that I am earning back. You could just probably put six. Yeah, there. no, I'm just going to negate the the six. Okay, just yeah, make that, that a zero. Yeah. Okay, for these two, this is three points per uh, dwarf with a with weapon. a weapon. So I think I have four of them that have a weapon, right? Uh, three of them. Three of them. That's my dwarf. Oh. One, two, three. Only, yes, it was in yes, your best yes, interest yes. to get that one there, but... It would, get... only, it would have only been another three Well, points. the thing is, getting the rubies got you four points. Getting yeah. the weapon would get you three. Yeah, three. But, you know, who so, knows? Yeah. So that's nine. And then this is one point for every three farm animals. We said that I had 15, so that's five points. Nice. Right? So it's 14. 14, yeah. 14 total. Mm -hmm. okay. And you negated that. Wow. Uh, gold coins and begging markers. Nobody took a begging no marker. Begging markers. I don't even think I taught it. Uh, I believe if you are unable to feed during the harvest phase, it's a begging uh, token tile, for yeah. every food, I think, that you can't yeah, feed. Yeah, so if you're short two food, you get two begging tiles. Each begging tile is minus three points, essentially. And I think it's any time you have to feed. It doesn't have to be a harvest, because sometimes there are feeding times that are not yep. harvest yep. events. Okay, right. how many do you have? Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Nice. Ten. Okay. And, and I have four. four. Yep. <laughs> so this is going to be close. Yeah, I think all right. So. Yeah. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of math and then I'll get back to you. All right, scores are in and the final scores are me with 63 okay. to Naveen with 77. 77? Nice, ah. good job. You deserved it, especially considering I cheated and I started the game with one extra That was my food. fault though, saying that. Like, I, I don't know why I thought like you got Still, extra food is going second. Didn't feel fair. Yeah. It's not in the rule book. Wow, but there you go, good job. Thanks. You have farmed your way to victory. I did. How does it feel? It felt good. It felt good getting all the animals in there. Like, you know, what? like at the halfway point of the game, you're yeah. like, I got nothing going. I got no animals. I got nothing like here. Yeah. Nothing's really working. And then all of a sudden, like you have the last like four rounds and you can- And really... then everything happens, Yeah, right? yeah. So if you're curious, um, the thing that really did it for you were your furnishing tiles, pastures, and mines. So just having yeah, built uh, so much stuff, you scored 31 points in that. Yeah, and then, to the, my 17. and then the yellow one, which was just hoard these towards the end of the game. Yeah, just so basically the, don't spend the them. stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so stone. that was good. Yeah, and that's where I really kind of failed. I think I was really going for like the expedition spots, and I knew mm -hmm. it too. I just couldn't stop. I couldn't stop myself. It's just nice to have a menu of things that yes. you can gather, especially as like your weapon gets stronger. It's like oh, I can do this, this, and this. And, yeah, like, you know, you get a little bit of everything. It's kind of like going to the arcade, right? Yeah. Like if you're a kid who grew up in that kind of environment where you get the tickets and you get to choose what you, you want you it's see the menu so, of things yeah. so enticing yeah um but in me doing that i was i was uh ignoring other spots and probably devaluing them right like yeah i could be getting uh more ore mines or constructing ruby mines and if you do it early enough then they can really uh, work for you in the future as yeah. the game progresses having, so. having fields also ready to go and and taking that slash and burn or that sewing action yeah. and being able to actually get the full three or four out on there yeah is really valuable i find is, that yeah. like versus just like taking the one action just putting one or two vegetables on there yeah that's true mm -hmm. and the other thing is getting the rubies it always feels so bad to spend them but i think that if you do you'll probably score higher <laughs> because rubies give you access to a lot of stuff that yeah you... it's a big menu it's it's a menu that you can use at any time so mm -hmm. that's that's the part of it that's really strong it's not even an action yeah. a lot of this stuff you can get uh through ex going on an expedition but the fact that you can just do it literally when an oppor opportune time hits is where the rubies really shine. Yeah, I don't really use the rubies too often. Um, I, I also get that like kind of uncomfortable feeling of like, ah, it's a point. I don't know if I want to. I did, though, at one point spend three rubies uh, earlier in the game. And I think that helped me set up some things. I don't remember the exact details as to what I did. Uh, in the playthrough but yeah it, it, these are very valuable mm -hmm. just the, the idea that you can spend it without taking an action when you have only sometimes in, in the midpoint of the game you only have three actions like yeah, by the time yeah, you get yeah. that fourth person it's like it's kind of later later in the game at least for us I right, mean, right, because right. you have to be able to furnish like have a dwelling for them where they can be so yeah i really like the rubies and also if you're curious the last time we played this game you scored 76 okay. so you've uh you've gotten one, one point, point more. better and i scored oh i scored low oh, i scored lower than what i scored today <laughs> so maybe it is an improvement <laughs> maybe <laughs> right? yeah one point that's progress yeah that is progress I'll take that all right so let's talk about this this is a game that came out in did we say 2013 13. the same year as glass road mm -hmm. very different games very different weights right? Yes. Um, they, play the box, also. Yeah, the playtime says 30 minutes per player. That can be done, especially if you're a veteran player, then if you're playing with veteran players. But yeah. if you play like us, <laughs> this is, did not play in yeah, an hour, no. I'll tell you that. Yeah, by the time this is all done, like that. Yes, that our filming time down, yeah. was long. Yeah. And uh, it, a part of it is because we have considerable um, analysis paralysis, depending on, you know, where we are, what's happening in the gameplay. Because you still have that food, like that, 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 thing about food like so you always have to be like i want to do this i want to do that but oh wait uh food's coming up yeah so i know i'm gonna have to feed so right. how, how am i gonna math this out so i can do the most towards what i want to do but still have at least the bare minimum to feed yeah and so speaking of that you know this is a game that is very much agricola but different right yeah. it follows the same uh, skeleton the same structure of gameplay mm -hmm. just feels quite opposite you know, where Agricola really shined at making you feel like somebody's putting you in a chokehold. Yeah. This is quite the opposite, where it's almost too many things to do that you, I don't know about you, but I feel overwhelmed when I play it. There are a lot of times where I'm like, I can't, I feel like I can't focus on a specific strategy. In this game. In this game. Okay, yeah. Because maybe I'll start going down one route and then somebody will block me. <laughs> and then I'll yeah. think like, oh gosh, maybe I should try something else. Yeah. So it's, it's almost the abundance of options gives me a hard time. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I can but see that. One of the main differences is in Agricola, a lot of people focus on the fact that you have to feed your people. And, and when, it is a big fact. You're like, 
you have to feed them. You really do. Yeah. And in Agricola, the resources are so much tighter. So one of the ways in which uh, they kind of changed the feel, or Uwe Rosenberg changed the feel of this game in particular, is in giving you the ability to convert um, things into food at any time, yep. right? That is a, a, a big part of, of why it doesn't feel as strict when you need to feed your people. Yeah, and also like uh, in Agricola, like there's only one place in a two-player game at least to get wood. In this one, you, you got logging, you have wood gathering, and then you have uh, the clearing. Mm -hmm. So things start to stack up. So it's like, okay, I didn't get it this round, but it's right. stacking up on the other ones. In Agricola, it's like, if Monique is just controlling the wood market and you're just getting pinned down, you're like, I need that wood. <laughs> and it's not coming to me. So this one has a little bit more um, abundance in terms of getting resources, at least at the two-player game. Yeah, and... Uh... I know that there are some spaces in Agricola that are combination spaces, if mm -hmm. I'm remembering correctly, but this one has a lot of them. Yeah. You know, there are a lot, there's a lot of freedom of choice, but the, you know, the overabundance does make it tough because you're wanting, or I don't know about you, when I go to spaces, I feel like it's not, I'm not getting the most bang for my buck if I can't do the entire card, yes, <laughs> which yeah, is not yeah. the right way to think about yeah. this, I'm sure. Going back to feeding your people, I kind of mentioned that it's not a big deal in Caverna. Actually, after playing this again, it is still, it a, big is. It's still a big deal. You yeah. still feel it. Like, it still stops you in your tracks because you still need to make sure that you have enough food. Mm -hmm. But there's just so many more ways that you can just get food yep. in an instant. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that's interesting is Agricola came out in 2007. About six right? years before, yeah. Yeah, so there's been six years between that design and basically its successor, which is this game. Mm -hmm. And in between, he released all these other games that were uh, somewhat similar in theory. Theme, but also very different, right? Yeah. There was Lahab, there was at the Gates of Loyang, or at Labora, yep. um, and then the same year came Glass Road. Yeah, and different mechanisms for it, like uh, Lahab, you know, you're moving along that track, or at Labora, um, you're, or at Labora is kind of like this, but um, at the Gates of Loyang. Right? was definitely different with like the, the tea structure that you're trying to kind of get your cards and, and orders fulfilled. All the food food trading, basically. Mm -hmm. yep. Glass Road uh, featured a lot of cards. And in this game, he pretty much dropped the cards. It was almost as if he said, OK, I've tried all these other things. Let's go back. Let's go back to Agricola yeah. and uh, just change how it feels, mm -hmm. right? And I know when we were getting into the hobby, which is around uh, 2015, mm -hmm. Caverna and Agricola were two games that were huge at the time. They were the heavy board games, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, people would be like, oh, have you played Caverna? You like heavy games? Yeah. And you're like, no, I haven't. So. And the uh, thing that's interesting is the audience is very split. Yes. Um, you know, even, even after this game was released and people, you know, started falling lo in love with Caverna, a lot of people were still like, I still prefer Agricola better. So there is a debate as to which one do you prefer because they feel so different. Mm -hmm. So which one do you prefer? Let us know in the comments down below because that's always uh, something I'm very curious to hear about. Also, what strategies do you like to employ? Because uh, like we were mentioning earlier, this is a very sandboxy game. It's, uh, it has a lot, a lot of options and there are a lot of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. But uh, for people who are sort of veteran players of Caverna, after playing it so many times, I don't know if it maybe starts to feel vanilla because it's always the same sort of options. The differences every time you come to play the game are going to be differences in player count, uh, differences in the timing. Timing is huge in a game like this, right? Yeah, especially like when the cards are going to come out, like mm -hmm. uh, like when a, a, a level one, like stage one card is going to come out. You anticipate... Yeah. You know, blacksmithing coming out early. Oh, no, it came out actually in round seven. So then, you know, the, right. yeah, it's going to change. Even in just the dynamics. first three rounds, those three cards that come out in the first three rounds, what order they come in is going to impact the feel of the game mm -hmm. and kind of how it plays out, right? Yeah. And so for anybody who feels like the game gets a little bit samey, uh, there is this expansion. Mm -hmm. I think this was the first expansion to come out. It's called the Forgotten Folk expansion. Yep. And it basically has a bunch of different uh, factions that you can play as. Like Ace like, characters. Yeah, Ace Bunch of characters. Yeah. And each character, the thing that I like about it is each character character has something that helps them and something that hurts them. Mm -hmm. So the first time I ever played Caverna, actually, I played with this. So mm -hmm. it's, it's something that you can easily integrate um, that, that doesn't really take up a lot more uh, learning space because I, I, I thought it was just a part of the yeah, game. You just kind of follow like, OK, this is my my ideal strategy is right. to, to focus on kind of what, what this asymmetric starting point where it basically tells you and kind of guides you in a particular path because right. this is so sandboxy. This kind of changes it up a little bit for you. Yeah, yeah. It also yeah. introduces uh, some other types of resources. It's not just those factions, right. but that is probably the main point of it. So I really, really like that expansion. We decided not to play with it because um, neither of us are that well-versed at Caverna. Yes. I, we've only played it a handful of times, mm -hmm. and every time we've played it, it's been separated by a long time. A long between. period of time, yeah. So in order to, to really be familiar with a game like this, I think you have to kind of really play it back-to-back, -back, right? Mm -hmm or at least not separated by months. Yeah, because from so, what I understand, uh, like some people score in like the 90s 
And I'm never close to that. Like se- mid seventies is kind of like yeah, I think kind I've, of where I peaked. I think I've scored in the seventies once. Yeah. So and, and granted, part of it, part of the reason why is because we're playing a two player game, so uh, we have one uh, fewer rounds. That's true. Yeah. But people okay. still score in the nineties in right. a two player game. So I think in higher player counts, you score in the hundreds, and that's like a really excellent score. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm doing half that right now. I don't know how to do it? Yeah. And I know, by the way, that there is a second expansion that I think was just released this year. Yeah. But we don't really know. I don't know much about, about it. it. Yeah. This game, I uh, one of the biggest things for me is how many dwarves do I need to get things done? I can never figure out. Like, I know I yeah. definitely want to get to four. You can get up to six. There's some. There's one furnishing tile that allows you to get a six one. I can never figure out when is the right time and when is the right balance of time to, to get that fifth one. Knowing that you have to feed them, yeah. knowing that you're going to spend an entire action just waiting for them to, to kind of come into your employ. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I've never gotten to the fifth one. So maybe that's that's what's holding me back from getting to 90. I, I mean, I don't have no an answer idea. either. Yeah. I usually do three. I usually have three or four dwarves by the mm-hmm. end of the game. And that's pretty much it. Or actually, no, I had five dwarves in that last game. And I lost. <laughs> yeah. I lost by a lot. So it doesn't matter. It's not. It's not. The point is not having as many dwarves as possible. It's because, you know, it's, most Euro. You got to like, just do it. Yeah, most Euro worker placement games, the more actions you take, you, the, you assume the more, you know, successful you're going to be in the game. So. Right. But Sometimes the problem, it holds you back. The problem is, in this game, getting an extra dwarf costs so much time and resources. Yeah. You have to spend the time and the resources just to build the dwelling. And then you have to make sure that you are the in the right uh, player turn order to now uh, make the baby, yep, right? Yep. And then you have to feed the and baby. Feed so it, yeah. it's not as easy as that. In other uh, worker placement games, getting an extra worker isn't usually that difficult and doesn't usually cost that much the for the rest costs. of the game. Yes, okay. So that's why I don't necessarily think that numbers is the best. Mm. It's just that that uh, first third to first half of the game um, where you kind of feel like you don't have anything going for you, I think is pretty critical. You yeah. need to build a proper infrastructure in that time. Sure. Anyway, let us know what your strategy is in terms of how many dwarves to get in the game. Um, but close. overall... The game is excellent. Yeah, very good. We, I, I, I don't know about you, but I really love this game. Mm-hmm. I even, even if I don't do well, it's, it's pretty much on par with the piece for Odin in that sense. That even when I don't do well, I had a great time playing the game. Yeah, just trying to figure things out and like trying to plan out your routes and mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna try to take this action first and that second, and oh, they took it second. Okay, now there's another way to do it. So uh, it's fun. Like when you're in the thick of it and try to figure out and plan your map and try yeah. to get everything going, I, I have a really good time with it. It's a really, really good game. Uh, this is. One of those games that I wish that if if we could play several games just back to back, like we didn't have to to go through so many games all the time. Mm-hmm. This is one of the games that I would love to have in yeah, that circulation. Keep coming back to, yeah. keep coming back to it because mm-hmm. it's so fun. It's always yeah. just such a fun experience. Yeah. And uh, we are going to answer that question of which one, Agricola or Caverna. Because we do like both. But probably in a wrap-up video. Yeah. I will say that I do prefer the variety of furnishing tiles that this game kind of specializes in versus the card play that Agricola mm. kind of leans into. Right, right. In Agricola, it's all about what combination of cards can you kind of yeah. try to figure out uh, as a part of your strategy. Right. Whereas this one is, which furnishing tiles can you, you know, usually uh, use to your advantage? Build and use to your advantage, yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm not exactly sure which one I like better. I do like both of them, so I'm going to kind of marinate on it and think a little bit more. Uh, and eventually, in the wrap-up video, I will make a determination which one I like. surprise. Well, uh, that is it yep. for Caverna today. Um, next up, I believe, is Fields of Arl, which is going to be interesting because it is a heavy game as well two player only two player only and neither of us have played it we have not played it yet so it's going to be a little bit of time before we're ready to film that one i would say a few weeks probably we're going to try i really want to try to finish uh the entire series before i can't really say that before the end of the year yeah but pretty close to the start of january yeah the holidays are coming up here in southern california or in the u.s (laughs) in the world (laughs) everywhere yeah so uh we're going to try to get to it as soon as we can Well, anyway, thank you all so much for watching the video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to follow along with the rest of the Uwe Rosenberg series, there's always that little eye in the top over here. We'll also leave a link to the playlist down below in the description. Let us know your strategies for this game because uh, Monique and I are very uh, average at this game and we'd like to get better. (laughs) We do like it a lot. So thank you all so much for watching the video. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.